कर दिया स्टार्टअप Good evening to everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, discussion session of our All India Mock Test Number One. So today we are going to start with your uh, uh, with your geography component, and I hope uh, most of you have done good uh, in this paper. So, कुछ लोग बताएंगे कि कैसा रहा आप लोगों का paper और कैसा मतलब आप लोगों की performance रही question paper कैसा लगा? और क्वेश्चन पेपर टाइम पे हो गया था या नहीं हो गया था तो थोड़ा सा उसके बारे में बताइए कैसा रहा आज आप लोगों का पेपर तो अगर सब लोग थोड़ा सा एक्टिव होके मुझे थोड़ा सा बताएंगे तो आज के पेपर के बारे में थोड़ा सा फीडबैक मिलेगा कि कैसा रहा आप लोगों की परफॉर्मेंस और किस तरीके से मतलब आप लोगों ने पूरा पेपर अटेम्प कर लिया या क्वेश्चन जो थे आपके छूट गए थे तो थोड़ा सा एक फीडबैक दीजिएगा लेकिन पहला क्वेश्चन अगर हम देखें तो अगर हम फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन पे ध्यान दें ज्योग्राफी में वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द ज्योग्राफी कंपोनेंट ओके सो वी हैव अराउंड 14 क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द ज्योग्राफी एंड सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद दिस ज्योग्राफी कंपोनेंट एंड आई एम सिद्धार्थ मित्तल सो आई एम अ फैकल्टी हियर फॉर ज्योग्राफी जनरल स्टडीज एंड ज्योग्राफी ऑप्शनल एंड इन केस इफ यू हैव any doubt related to this geography you can get connected to our telegram channel also uh, uh, the links for the various telegram channel are given in the description box of this video or in this live discussion okay so let's start with the geography component or theek hai prashant ne bataya hai ki good paper tha aur rupesh mishra bhi bol rahe hain ki paper acha tha okay to kitne jane aise hain jinhone pura paper kar liya tha How many of you have attempted the question? Uh, how many of you have attempted all the questions, or in a given time? चलिए थोड़ा सा lag है इधर से मैं बोल रहा हूँ तो थोड़ा सा lag है तो मैं चलिए इसी तरह discussion पे आता हूँ और जो हमारा पहला question का discussion अगर हम देखें हमारा first question geography का आ जाता है fifty one number पर फिफ्टी वन नंबर पे आपको ज्योग्राफी का पहला क्वेश्चन आपको देखने को मिलता है दैट इज अ फिफ्टी वन नंबर एंड लुक टू दिस क्वेश्चन इट इज अ वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन इफ यू आर हैविंग अ इफ यू आर हैविंग दिस क्वेश्चन पेपर देन यू कैन गो डायरेक्टली टू द फिफ्टी वन नंबर क्वेश्चन ओके जस्ट गो टू दिस फिफ्टी वन नंबर क्वेश्चन एंड जस्ट लुक टू दिस क्वेश्चन एंड आई होप मोस्ट ऑफ यू हैव अटेम्प्टेड इट करेक्टली means you people have answered it correctly and uh, because this was a very simple question a simple and a very straight forward factual question so if you are aware about the current affairs or if you are aware about uh, the uh, various aspects of the current affairs then you can you can um, you can do this question okay so look to this question uh, which of the following statement is or are correct regarding uh, regarding this uh, just a minute uh so let me take the pen first okay so which of the following statement is or are correct regarding one ocean summit so this is the uh, this is they are given now the summit was organized in cooperation with the united nation and the world meteorological organization and i hope this is the this is the wrong statement okay this is the wrong statement because it is not connected with the world meteorological uh this is not connected with the world meteorological organization okay uh, it is connected with the world bank it is connected with world bank okay so this statement is wrong this one is wrong and under the summit unesco reiterated its commitment to support healthy ocean system through seabed 2030 program this is right okay and uh, you know about the uh, means about the cleaning of the ocean because this is a international effort to clean up the oceans so under this so under the summit unesco reiterated its commitment to support healthy ocean system through seabed uh, 2030 program this is right and india's commitment to phase out single use plastic by 2022 also supports the summit's objective this is also right 
and this in this case your answer this is wrong and the question here is which are select the correct answer so in this case your answer is going to be in this case the answer is going to be your option b option b is going to be your choice in this question okay any doubt in this question any doubt any doubt in this question guys इस क्वेश्चन के अंदर में मेरी ख्याल से किसी को कोई डाउट नहीं होगा बिकॉज बिल्कुल स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड क्वेश्चन था अब आ जाते हैं हम लोग लॉट के 52 नंबर क्वेश्चन के ऊपर ओके लेट्स लुक टू द 52 नंबर क्वेश्चन नाउ दिस इज अगेन अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन रीड दिस रीड द स्टेटमेंट कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग साइक्लोनिक स्ट्रॉम असानी ओके और इट मे बी ए मे बी साइलेंट सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी सानी so consider the following statement regarding the cyclonic storm asani the cyclone is a general term for a weather system in which the winds rotate inward inwardly to an area of low atmospheric pressure now this is a very typical characteristics of the cyclone this is a typical characteristics of the cyclone <clears throat> okay and uh, just a minute this is a typical characteristics of the cyclone that uh, you can see and we define the cyclone in this term only so if we look to this one so uh, just a minute guys this is okay so cyclone is a general term cyclone is a general term with, uh, for a weather system in which winds rotate inwardly to an area of low atmospheric pressure okay so this is statement the first statement is uh, perfectly perfectly okay i uh, there is no doubt with this first statement now if you look to the first statement then this is going to be a, a perfectly right statement there is no doubt in this one okay uh, i am finding problem in the annotation of this one uh, this is not working properly okay देखने से क्या ओके तो जस्ट मिनट गाइस पास में ओके नाउ जस्ट हैव अ लुक टू दिस वन कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग साइक्लोनिक स्टॉम असानी okay the cyclone is a general term for a weather system in which wind rotates inwardly to an area of low atmospheric pressure so this is a right statement there is no problem with this statement and the name of a cyclone asani formed in the arabian sea region has been given by sri lanka so these both the statement uh, both of these statement are okay there is no problem with both these two statement and the answer in this case is going to be your option b both 1 and 2 okay so this is going to be both 1 and 2 is going to be your answer in this case now uh, now come to the next question uh, come to the next question now the next question is about the nechi fu tunnel that is uh, match with the sikkim nechi fu tunnel any idea about nechi fu tunnel now you can get the answer key there is no issue with the answer key abhishek no uh, uh, we are we are already discussing these these questions just focus on the discussion that we are having in front of you so we will have we will provide you the answer key shortly after this video or you are also going to have the complete uh, 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 complete uh, uh, explanation of each and every question so just look to this one uh, nechi fu tunnel that is sikkim so nechi fu tunnel is not connected with the sikkim uh, it is actually associated with the not with the sikkim rather it is associated with the kameng district of arunachal pradesh okay so coming district of the arunachal pradesh so the uh, this one is wrong the first uh, pair is wrong and then the next one is atal tunnel atal tunnel is himachal pradesh that is okay there is no problem with this one so atal tunnel that is rohtang pass so this this pair is right and sela tunnel in maharashtra again this is wrong because sela tunnel is again in coming arunachal pradesh so your uh, pair number 1 and pair number 3 is incorrectly match okay pair number 1 and pair number 3 is incorrectly match and in this case your answer is going to be only two pair so question here is uh, which of the above given pair is or are matched incorrectly 
which of the above given pair is or are matched incorrectly. So in this case, this one is matched incorrectly because both of them are related with the Kaming district of Arunachal Pradesh. So Nechifu and the Sela Tunnel, they both are related with the uh, uh, Arunachal Pradesh. So they both are incorrectly matched. So in this case, your option C is going to be your answer. Okay. So uh, now <coughs> look to the next question. <coughs> Next question that we have and the question number is now 54, okay, 54 is the question number. Now consider the following statement regarding the rare earth metals and its distribution, rare earth metal and its distribution. These minerals shows luminescent and electrochemical properties. So I hope you people know about this one that these minerals are having this property of luminescent and electrochemical properties. They, we have approximately 17 rare earth metals. So all of them show a property of luminescent and uh, electrochemical property. So this first statement is right. There is no problem with this one. India has 6% of the world earth reserves and meets most of its requirement from the domestic production. No, India do not meet the uh, requirement from the domestic production. Rather, most of the uh, means uh, India is heavily dependent upon to the import from China. So this second statement is wrong. As of 2022, United States produces more than two-third of the total global rare earth mine production. No, this is also wrong because in this case, the China is right. If it is written about the China, it's not United States, it is, has, it, uh, it is to be China. And lithium and copper are rare earth metals. So lithium and copper are both, they both are not counted in rare earth metals. They are not counted in rare earth metals. So uh, in this case, uh, the question is which of the following is correct? So only this statement, only this statement is correct and uh, this, this is the only statement which you will find to be correct uh, in this one and uh, okay, this is the only statement that we have. So this is the only statement which is correct and this is wrong and this is wrong and uh, this one is also wrong. Okay, so in this case, so answer should be only one but uh, you are not given any option related to only one. So I will recommend. Uh, to, uh, the people who are going to evaluate your uh, answer sheet or our software also will give you a bonus mark for this question because this question is having a fault from our side. Okay, so there is some uh, some typing mistake. So your answer should be statement one, but we don't have any option related to the statement one. So in this case, uh, uh, we will uh, we will just uh, give you a extra mark for this one. Okay. Now come to the next question, come to the next question and the next question that is related to our uh, 55 number, come to the 55 number question which is again related to the geography. Consider the following statement, Chennai uh, Nasri Tunnel is the connectivity project of Jammu, uh, sorry not Chennai, uh, Chenani, Chenani Nasri Tunnel is the connectivity project of Jammu and Srinagar under Bha Bharat Mala project. Okay, so this is, this is right, there is no problem with this one. Okay, because Bharat Mala project is a, one of the uh, biggest infrastructure project that we have launched uh, since independence. So Bharat Mala project is uh, that is uh, okay with this one. Parvat Mala program is an aerial mode of transportation under the Ministry of Defense. This is also right. There is no problem with this one. So in this case, your answer choice is going to be uh, both one and two. In this case, the question is which of the following is uh, is or are correct. Okay, which of the following is or are correct. So in this case, your answer choice is going to be uh, both one and two. Okay, now look to the uh, look to the next one, uh, uh, next one, and uh, uh, that is uh, the next question that we have is a fifty-six number. Now the fifty-six number question. If we go to the fifty-six number question, uh, then we will find that uh, uh, again a question related to the physical geography. Consider the following statement regarding Peeless cloud. It is formed over the cumulus and cumulonimbus cloud. Now remember, uh, remember uh, in in this type of a question, if you know about the uh, Peeless cloud or some rare type of a concept, then only you attempt this question. If you do not know, do not attempt this question because you have uh, more chances of doing it wrong. Okay. So these type of the question to be attempted only when you are well aware about a particular concept. Uh, do not take it by chance. Okay. So if in case if you are aware about this concept, then only you attempt it. Otherwise, do not attempt this question. So it is something a uh, very uh, rare type of a phenomena that sometimes observe. So Peeless cloud, it is formed over a cumulus or cum uh, cumulonimbus cloud. Yes, this is right. There is no problem with this one. This is right. 
that it is formed over the cumulus and cumulonimbus clouds. And the next is it shows cloud iridance, which means appearing of the bright colors on the cloud. Okay, so this this statement is also uh, this statement is also correct. There is no problem. And here the uh, here the catch is that you need to find out the incorrect statement. Now, as both the statement are correct, so this is going to be neither one and neither two is going to be your answer. Neither one and neither two is going to be your answer. Okay, now come to the next one, next question that is your 57 number. Now, which of the following statement is or are correct about the El Nino, okay, and La Nina. And I hope most of you are aware about this concept of uh, uh, in and, uh, okay, and then uh, means which of the following statement is or are correct about El Nino and La Nina. Triple dip La Nina reflects when you have a La Nina for consecutively three years, then we call it to be as a triple dip La Nina reflects uh, extensive cooling of the western pacific ocean no it is not the western pacific ocean it is going to be uh, uh, eastern pacific ocean so this is wrong this in in this side it has to be eastern so this is wrong there is no problem and el nino of 2015-16 was dubbed godzilla due to its sustained high intensity that is also right this is there is no problem because of the sustained high intensity of approximately 19 months so this el nino was uh, sustained for approximately 19 months. So, this is El Nino of 2015-16 and they were usually the strongest during the winter. Generally, they they, they develop in the month of a March, uh, May and the June. They generally tend to develop uh, and uh, in the month of, in the month of the March, um, in the month of the, uh, in the month of the uh, March, April or sorry, sometimes in the month of the May and the June and they tend to intensify uh, they tend to intensify into the winter. So, this is this is going to be the right statement. An extended La Nina event is a considered bad for the Indian monsoon. Extended La Nina event is considered bad. No, it is not considered bad to be for an Indian, Indian monsoon. Rather, La Nina supports the Indian monsoon, the idea of Indian monsoon or it supports the phenomena of Indian monsoon. So, this is also wrong. So, select the correct answer using the code given below. So, if you look to the code given below, and then uh, we will move towards the second and third and this second and third and this option D is going to be your answer. Okay, option B, option uh, D, uh, sorry, second and third. So, option D is going to be your correct answer in this case. Okay, now come to the next question. Okay, uh, don't worry Vikram, uh, don't worry. I'll check this question once again. Vikram Singh, don't worry Parvatmala and about uh, 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 Vikram, don't worry. I'll just check this question once again about the Parvat Mala. Don't worry. Okay. So, uh, we'll give you an, a, a complete explanation about uh, each and every question. Okay. So, uh, next one, uh, next question is uh, uh, which of the following statements are correct about earth interior landforms? Which of the following statements? So, this is your question number 58. This is your question number 58 and look to the which of the following statement uh, are correct about earth interior landforms. So, dikes are formed uh, when lava makes its way through cracks and the fissures develop in the land and it solidifies almost parallel, no perpendicular. So, dike is used only in the case of deposition or only in the case of solidification of a lava perpendicular to the ground. So, it is wrong here. So, instead of parallel, it has to be perpendicular. And then if you look to the other statement, if you go to the other statement, the other statements are uh, for this for the same question, batholiths are the cool portion of the magma chamber. So, there is no problem. This is right. And Karnataka plateau, domal hills of granite rocks are examples of the lacoliths or batholiths. This is also right. And in this case, your answer choice is going to be, uh, the answer choice is going to be because you need to select the correct answer. So, answer choice is going to be option B. Okay, is it clear? So, answer choice is going to be option B. Now, come to the next question. Look to the next question. Which of the following statement regarding earth structure is incorrect? Okay, regarding the earth structure is incorrect. The best known example of divergent boundary. Now, remember this one. Uh, this is we need to find out the incorrect. So, the best known example of divergent boundaries is the mid-Atlantic ridge. So, this is right. There is no problem. The crust is destroyed as one plate dive under the another plate and sinking of a plate occurs is called subduction zone. This is right. There is no problem with this one. 
Now the question is you need to find out the incorrect one. As per the plate tectonics theory, tectonic plates move vertically over the asthenosphere as a reset unit. No, they do not move vertically, rather they are moving horizontally. So this is wrong and if you have, because you need to select only one option, so option C is wrong. And transform fault are the planes of separation generally perpendicular to the mid-oceanic ridges. This is right. So this is this is the wrong one, and your answer choice is going to be option C in this particular case. Okay, in this question. Now come to the next question, question number 60. Uh, come to the question number 60. Consider the following statement about the plate movement at the earth's surface. Plate movement at the earth's surface. Faulting is a type of a earth movement resulting from the horizontal compression of the rock layer. No, faulting me in when we have a horizontal compression, we will take it to be as a we will take to be as an idea of folding. So instead of faulting, we will take the idea of folding here. Compression. Compressional forcing will result into the folding. And second statement: the folding result in a fracture of a zone and fracture between the two blocks of a rock that allow the rocks to move relative to each other. Now, this is also not folding. This is not folding. Rather, we will call it to be as a faulting. This is the definition of a faulting. This is a phenomenon of faulting. So, we will call it to be as a faulting. And the fault dip is the deviation of the fault plane from the horizontal plane. This is right. This one is right. There is no problem with this one. So, your uh, demand of the question is to find out the incorrect one. Okay. So, the incorrect one in this case, you have the incorrect one in this case that you have is uh, first and the second and your answer choice should be option A in this case. So option A should be your answer choice in this case. Okay. Now next one, next question if we look to the next question, next number question, uh, come to the next number question and the next number question is on 84 number. Now move to the 84 number uh, So and look to the question again related to the geography. So, 84 number question, we will move towards the 84 number question now and uh, uh, so this is uh, 78, 79 and we are going to be, uh, we are going to have this 84 number and 84 number, consider the following statement, uh, revolution is the movement of the earth on its axis and the movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed path is called rotation. I hope this is a very simple one. Yes, sixth class ke NCRT wala bacha bhi kar lega si isko, this is going to be the wrong statement. Reason being because they have interchanged, rather it has to be rotation and another one has to be revolution. Okay, so this is wrong, uh, this statement is wrong and come to the next other statement of the 84 number and the rotation of the earth produces bulging at the equator due to which uh, the actual shape of the earth resembles that of an oblate spheroid. Now, do you agree this one? This is right. There is no problem with this one. This is what that is why we are having this bulge and the planet earth axis is tilted at 23.5 degree which is responsible for the various seasons on the earth. Yes, this is also right. There is no problem with this one and the demand of the question is about the correct one. So, this is uh, uh, second and third is going to be your correct answer choice in this case. Okay. Now, come to the next question which of the following is incorrect regarding the marine heat waves. Incorrect regarding the marine heat waves. Okay, you may have heard about the marine heat waves also. Now, instead of uh, going into the concepts or into the details of the marine heat wave, just just scan all the options. Now, if you if you look to the option C, you will find that coral reef shows an intrinsic resilience against the heat waves and not affected by them much. So this seems to be totally wrong statement because the change because marine heat waves uh, arises when we have an increase in the temperature of the ocean. So with the increase in the temperature of the ocean, we know that the coral reefs are going to be adversely affected. So this is going to be the uh, wrong statement in this one or the incorrect statement and rest of the statement the marine heat waves occur when a sea water temperature exceeds. This is right. There is no problem. They can occur in summer or winter. There is no problem because in the case of the Atlantic Ocean, the cold ocean currents are highly responsible. Warm ocean currents are highly responsible of causing such phenomena. And most common divers of the marine heat waves includes the ocean currents. There is no yes. This is what I have discussed just now. So this is right. So all the three statements are right, and option C is wrong. So you can choose the option C to be as your right answer. Okay. Now come to the question number eighty-six and. Regarding Indian soil, consider the following statement, Regard, Regard soil or is, is rich in potash and lack in phosphorus, nitrogen and organic matter. Okay, this is right. This is no problem with this one. 
So this is this is right. There is no problem. Laterite soil are rich in organic matter. Now they are not rich in organic matter. They are rather deficient in organic matter. So they are uh, they are poor in organic matter. So this is statement is wrong. And usra soil, usra soil bolo ya fir saline soil bolo. It is going to be the same word. So saline soil contains or usra soil contains a larger portion of the sodium, potassium and magnesium. This is right. There is no problem. Which of the following statement is or are correct? So your first and third is going to be your right choice in this case. Okay. Now come to the next question. Uh, come to the next number question. Uh, that is uh, 87 number. Which of the following statement influence the climate of India? During the winter months, the weather conditions over India being affected by the pressure distribution in Central and Western Asia. You know about the Western disturbances and you also aware about the winter rainfall, phenomena of the winter rainfall. So this, this, this is right. There is no problem with this one. And <coughs> let's read the other, other statement. And the other statements are the westerly jet streams brings western cyclonic disturbances. Yes, this is right. Westerly jet streams are responsible and presence of low pressure and intertropical convergence zone and the withdrawal of the westerly jet streams to the north of the Himalayas. You know that this occurs at the time of the monsoon. So this is also uh, right. There is no problem with this one. So all the statement, all the three statement, first, second and third are correct statement. There is no problem with any of the statement. Okay. Now let me check this question once again. Vikram, uh, what was that question number? Uh, let me check this question once again about the, uh, okay, so if any correction is required, I will uh, just verify it, okay, okay, and then uh, we have, uh, can you please tell me which was the, what was that question about, uh, okay, so question number 55, okay, that was a question number uh, 55, okay, uh, question number 55, uh, now that, that is the correct one. There is no problem. Both the statement are correct. Ch Chenani Nasari Tunnel is the connectivity project of Jammu Srinagar under Bharat Mala project. So uh, Bharat Mala project, there is no problem with this one. And Parvat Mala, uh, regarding the Parvat Mala, yeah, yeah, I got it. Uh, Abhishek, I got it beta. Abhishek, uh, I got your point. And uh, Parvat Mala, uh, that was uh, announced in uh, union budget of 2020, 20, uh, 2022 and 23. And uh, means they they deli they they um, they announced the national ropeway development program parvatmala to improve connectivity into the hilly areas okay so that will be taken on the public private partnership and uh, okay and uh, okay the scheme is being uh, presently started in the regions uttarakhand himachal pradesh manipur jammu kashmir and other northeastern state okay and then uh, so we have to improve the connectivity Okay, so we'll check it. No problem. Uh, we will just uh, verify it once again. There is no problem with this one. Okay, there is no problem with this one. We'll just verify it, and we will, if any any requirement is there, we will just verify it in our answer keys. So, if any requirement is there, we will just bring our required changes. Don't worry about it. So, you will get the correct answer key. Now, the question number fifty-two. Let me look to the question number fifty-two once again, and the question number fifty-two uh, was uh, okay. Question number 52, yeah. What is the problem with the question number 52? Okay. Uh, yeah, question number 52, the question number, okay, 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 right, right. Ha, so you can just make a little correction in this question number 52. Just uh, make a little correction in question number 52 that uh, it's not Arabian Sea, uh, question number 52. Okay. Uh, thanks uh, for uh, just keeping this in track. So uh, the question number 52, yes, 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 I missed this one. It is not Arabian Sea, it is Bay of Bengal. Right, 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 right. Okay, so this is Bay of Bengal. Okay, question number 52, just make a little correction in this question number 52. Uh, this one, uh, just a minute, just a minute guys. Uh, so question number 52, so we were having, uh, we are having this question number 52 in front of you now. And... Uh, this is uh, question number 52. Ah, so, uh, question number 52. Okay. Okay. This is. Ah, so, this is question number 52. So, just make a little correction. So, this is uh, not Arabian Sea. Here it is had, it has, it is Bay of Bengal. Okay. Bay of Bengal. Bay of Bengal. So, uh, the first statement is right and the second statement is wrong. 
so in this case uh, the question is which of the following statement is or are correct so in this case the option a is going to be your answer okay option ridhi is it okay ridhi is it okay so option a is going to be your answer in this case okay so yeah i missed this line actually uh, it is not arabian sea it is bay of bengal okay so uh, this is your answer choice is going to be option a and question number 54 that we have given to you uh, in the geography question number 54 uh, there is some uh, typo error so uh, we'll try we'll try to eliminate this question we will eliminate this question or we will give you an extra mark for this question otherwise in this question the answer choice is going to be only option a okay only first statement is going to be the correct one so uh, the first statement is going to be the correct one but we do not you do not have any option related to it so in this case we are going to give you either we are going to eliminate this question or we will give you a bonus mark for this one okay okay guys so uh, this is this is from my side and if you want to get connected from our uh, through our telegram channel we have so many telegram channels for the various purpose uh, we have a prelims uh, specific channels also we have a mains answer writing channels also and we have a optional subject related channels also so in case if you are interested or if you want to join any of our channel so most of the link of uh, these channels are given in the description box of this video and you can get connected to me even my geography optional uh, is also linked up there so if you want to join if anyone is interested in the geography optional he can get uh, he can join our geography optional group and we have already started our course related to 2024 examination for the mains 24 24 examination and so if you're interested you can come down okay so next uh, we are going to start with the history okay and uh, ma'am will come and discuss with you and let's uh, enjoy this discussion of history uh, with with uh, our faculty member okay so thanks a lot guys so that's all from my side so i will meet again in the next discussion Uh, am I audible? Yeah, hello to all. Am I audible? So please do let me know. Okay, okay. Uh, hello to all. And uh, good evening to all of you. Yes, chat once again. This is three questions. Yeah. Uh, good evening to all of you. 
and uh, here I am going to discuss with you uh, history questions and uh, so yeah yeah thank you so much Abhishek, Samrat and Naina yeah thank you so much to all of you so uh, here I am going to discuss uh, with you uh, history questions uh, so please ready ho jayen aap sabhi look so these are the questions of history so your first question is that please ek bar aap sab log check kar lije so please check uh, the questions one second pen pen yes one second, one second. Okay, uh, so your first question is that, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, thank you so much to all of you. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much to all of you. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Pulak. Okay. So, here the first question, uh, this is your first question that is consider the following statement regarding Rakhi Gadi site. Okay, uh, the first st statement is that a unique feature at Rakhi Gadi site was that in the cemetery the male burials often had more burial goods than the female burials. So, basically this question is related to Indus civilization and uh, this is about the Rakhi Gadi. So, a statement is all about the Rakhi Gadi. So, the first statement is the unique feature. So, this is the statement that consider the following statement about the Rakhi Gadi site. So, you have to consider this question. A unique feature of Rakhi Gadi that, uh, that the site had the symmetry, the male burials often had more burial goods than the female burials. The second statement is the Rakhi Gadi has cemeteries where burials with bodies outnumber cenotaphs. This is the second option. And the third option is urn burials suggestive of cremation and multiple burials of men and women were discovered at Rakhi Gadi. Okay, so which of the above statement is are correct? Statement 1 only, it means uh, that one statement is right. Statements B, it means 1 and 2, that is 1 and 2 is right. Statement C is only 2 right. Statement D is only 2 and 3 right. Okay, so about this question, your answer is uh, C. So, please, uh, I am going to explain about this. The answer is C. So, uh, Palak, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, Pulak, Abhishek, Samrat, uh, please uh, check the answer. The correct answer will be uh, the main, the, that is two only. Why the two only? That Rakhi Gadi has cemeteries where burials with bodies outnumber of cenotaphs. See, why first statement is incorrect because here the statement is that the cemetery the male burials often had more burial goods than the female burials yeah that the female burials see here the statement is just opposite because the statement the actual fact which is related to rakhi gadi that the yahan par uh, it means yahan par aap answer de denge yahan pe ki unique feature at rakhi gadi site was that in the cemetery the female burials had more burial goods than the male burials okay so that your first statement is not right that's why this is not correct okay now uh, come to the third option urn burials suggestive of cremation and multiple burials of men and women were discovered at the rakhi gadi okay why three number three statement is not right because most of multiple burial uh, is discovered from Lothal, not from Rakhi Gadi. That's why this statement is not right. Why this statement is wrong? Because of Lothal. See, because uh, multiple burials of men and women discovered at Rakhi Gadi, not Rakhi Gadi, it's Lothal. That's why this statement is not right. So, your correct answer that is C, 2 only. Okay? So, is that okay? Your first question uh, answer is that is C. It means this is about the Rakhi Gadi, that Rakhi Gadi. So, uh, please listen that Rakhi Gadi is the largest site in Indian subcontinent. And uh, right now, almost uh, we have uh, some discoveries from this Rakhi Gadi site. And Amrenath was the, was the excavator and he was the archaeologist who discovered, uh, who discovered uh, 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 Rakhi Gadi site and 
this site is very important why this site is very important because here uh, male man dna this uh, man dna will also we have to they send to the for the for a new experiment or for new researches also that's why rakhi gadi site is very important because here you can see the new discoveries and new researches also going on okay so please uh, correct your answer that is the on the first number question the answer will be 2 because why this is 2 uh, i already explain you that the number 1 is not right and number 3 is not right because of this statement this is the just opposite statement and the third will be because uh, lothal the multiple burials of men and women discovered not at rakhi gadi it discovered from the lothal is it okay samrat abhishek naina so uh, is it okay yeah so uh, now we are going to the next question if you all are ready for that okay <clears throat> this is all about the rakhi gadi yeah this is all about the rakhi gadi the statement is related to rakhi gadi why question uh, raised from the rakhi gadi because almost new researches and discoveries also happen in the site of rakhi gadi that's why this site is very important in the context of indus civilization so uh, now we are going to the next question the next question is see the question is this is basically related to the yeah this is uh, basically related to the okay sejal naina okay thank you so much thank you so much to all of you okay now the second question is that is related to vedic period or vedic time period vedic era the first statement so which of the following statement is are correct remember one thing whenever you are attempting your question so firstly you have to clear about this ki that this is correct this is the keyword because sometime if you are not clear yeah if you are if you are missing this word so might possible your answer should be wrong why that is wrong because you are not reading properly that's why so please always try to do uh, one thing that firstly you have to be very clear about that this statement that what is the statement which of the following statements is are correct so this is all about the correct not incorrect okay so the first statement is yeah uh, about the first statement the first statement here is the in the early vedic period sabha was the most popular assembly and included common people okay so this is about the political institution which is related to vedic era which is related to vedic time period sabha this is about the sabha okay as you know that sabha samiti and vidat these are the political institutions which is related to vedic time period yeah mahesh i already uh, explain i already explain the factuals uh, which is related to rakhi gadi maybe uh, you maybe you are not hear about that okay mahesh okay uh, see about the rakhi gadi okay mahesh now uh, i am giving your answer that what is the uh, here the here is student whose name is mahesh he is asking that uh, the special characteristic or features of rakhi gadi uh as you know that rakhi gadi is the largest site in the indian subcontinent so what is the special characteristics in rakhi gadi that is the uh, uh, this is also related to the township planning or biggest township this is also the part of township planning second thing is that we can see that especially in rakhi gadi yes in rakhi gadi you can see that uh, yes okay 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 i i i read your uh, yeah cylindrical uh, seal as you know that large number of seals excavated from the indus site okay from rakhi gadi we can see that a large that a cylindrical seal not a square shaped seals here we excavated here we found that the cylindrical shape uh, seals excavated from the rakhi gadi site okay third thing is that the antiquities included like blades terracotta and shell bangles okay uh, that also excavated from rakhi gadi and one more thing that is about the yeah yeah hi satendra yeah hi satendra 
I'm fine. I'm fine. And hope you all are fine. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and one, it means uh, nowadays we all say about that, ki that, what is USP about you? So here the USP you can say or a special characteristic of Rakhi Gadi that five interconnected mounds spread in a huge area from the Rakhi Gadi's unique site. That is also the unique feature. Okay, Mahesh. So maybe you understand that what exactly the unique feature or special characteristics of Rakhi Gadi. Now uh, we are going to the next question that uh, uh, which is the about the which of the following statement is are correct. So this is about the Vedic era. Uh, the, in the early Vedic period, Sabha was the most popular assembly and included common people. Vidat was the gathering at which among other things the booty acquired in a raid was distributed. Here the meaning is that, uh, I want to discuss a discuss karna chahti hun, just like in early Vedic period, that Sabha was most important, okay, that most, most, important, uh, most important political institu institution was Sabha and about the Vidhat, that gathering at which among the things the booty acquired in a raid was distributed. Question is about that which statement is right. Select the correct answer using the codes given below. One only, two only, one and two only, neither one or not two. Okay, so, yeah, okay, uh, in second question, the correct answer is B, only two only. Why here you can see, yeah, why here you can see the correct answer is, one second, only B. One second, one second, where is the brush, yeah. The correct answer here, uh, question number two, the correct answer is B, only two, uh, it means only two question, yeah, two number that is Vidat was the gathering at which among other things the booty acquired in a raid was distributed. Ye aapka sahi rahega because, isme kyu rahega because yahan par mein aapko thua explain kar deti hu. Thank you, welcome, welcome Mahesh. Okay, see, uh, statement one, why this is incorrect? The early Vedic period, okay, here this statement is about that the Sabha was the most popular assembly. No, Sabha was not the most popular assembly. Samiti was the most popular assembly, included common people, okay. So that this statement is wrong. Why this statement is wrong? As you know that Sabha, Samiti and Vidat. So here we can see that the, this is because, because about Sabha, so not Sabha, Samiti was the most popular assembly. Okay, yeah, exactly, Sejal, you are right. Yeah, exactly, you are right. Samrat, I am giving the answer and explanation also. So, please uh, listen that I am what I am exactly what I am asking about that. Ki sabha, not sabha. That is about the samiti. That is about the samiti. Okay. Second question, the two, the only two here is the right. Okay. So, why this is right? Yes, the concentration of the power was checked by various assemblies of the clansmen in particular in Vidhat, Sabha and Samiti. The Vidhat was the, here uh, please listen, the Vidhat was the gathering at which among other things the booty acquired, okay, in raid and was distributed. So that the second option is right. That's why here your, uh, here your the answer that is B, okay. Is it okay to all of you, Samrat? So you are getting the point that why question number uh, why uh, this uh, why question number one? It means why uh, the option one is not correct because of sabha. Samiti was more popular, not sabha. That's why. Okay. Sabha was yes. Yeah, sabha was selected body of elders. Sabha was selected body of elders and advised the king on administration. Okay. So basically, this is all about the political structure of Vedic period. During Vedic period, as you know that there was the political institution that is Sabha, Samiti and Vedat. Okay, Samrat. Now, so the correct answer is 2. Now, here we are on the question number third. The third question is, consider the following statements regarding the Bhakti movement. 
so this question is basically related to the bhakti movement and uh, this statement so please check that what is the statement statement number 1 that is in tamil devotionalism okay was hostile to vedic brahmanism but not to shramanic tradition so as you know already a question uh, already question raised in upsc examination in previous paper about the shraman tradition so uh, do you understand that what is shraman tradition uh, maybe you all know about the shraman tradition in 6th century bc we can see that at that time period that was the socio not socio that was the religious reform movement uh, that like just like rise of jainism buddhism okay and uh, Aj uh, ajivikas and uh, different different sects uh, emerged at the time period so that's why in 6th century bc we can see that different different sects emerged at the time period so basically uh, at that time period the different the emergence of different sects that is basically known as the shraman tradition so basically this question is about the that tamil devotionalism was hostile to vedic brahmanism but not to shamanic tradition okay question number second is according to the ramanuja's theories knowledge was the primary means of liberation from rebirth so and the third question number third is namavalar was a great nanar sent which of the statement given above is are incorrect remember my words that what i am asking to you that always very clear about this sentence that this is correct or incorrect so the statement is about that which is incorrect one only one and two only and one second one second two and three only one two and three please check the question samrat mahesh so please check the question yeah please check the question this is about the yeah please check the question question number <clears throat> question number 3 and statement and uh, about the option Co uh, c that is 2 and 3 only d that is 1 2 and 3 okay c uh, that is 1 only 1 and 2 only okay and 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 only here the answer so uh, about this question that uh, which is the correct answer yeah which is the correct answer because the question is about yes the question is about ki which statement given is are incorrect yeah which statement is about incorrect not correct answer here the question is about the incorrect which is not right which is not right see the question yeah you can see the question that this is about the incorrect so here the answer your answer should be yeah yeah you have to give the answer the correct option is d c one second yeah 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 yeah now i am going to uh, explain you that why 1 2 and 3 is not right see the question number uh, here the first option tamil devo, devo, uh, devotionalism was hostile to vedic brahmanism but not to shramanic tradition all are incorrect yes vikram exactly you are right yes vikram exactly you are right that all are incorrect why all are incorrect so uh, in question number yeah in the option number 1 that ta tamil devotionalism was hostile to vedic brahmanism but not to shramanic tradition the role of bhakti tradition i am checking your uh, chat so don't worry about that the role of bhakti tradition in relation to vedic brahmanism was in many ways similar to the earlier shramanic sects as i already discuss you that what is shramanic sects or what is uh, shramik shramanic uh, 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 sects and what was the role of shramanic sects okay the rituals and the claims of the brahmans to being close to the gods were unacceptable as was the social exclusion of the lower castes okay but the tamil about the ta tamil devotionalism was also yeah 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 towards the shramanic tradition so shramanic tradition was a basically it's like a movement and you can also say it's like a tradition which was emerged during the 6th century bc uh, when the rise of jainism and the rise of buddhism 
yeah exactly exactly vikram so uh, this uh, this sentence is not right according to ramanuja's theory knowledge was the primary means of liberation from rebirth the second statement is um, about the theory of ramanuja okay see ramanujan is regarded as the founder of shri vaishnava movement he disagreed with the shankara's theories that the knowledge was the primary means of the liberation from rebirth according to him yeah according to ramanuja it was merely one of the one of the yeah yeah it was merely one of the means and was not nearly as effective or reliable as pure devotion yeah ramanujan was an effective bridge yeah was an effective bridge between the devotional movements and brahmanical theology attempting as he did to weave together the two yeah divergent starts so you can see about that the second option that is also not right namal valar was a great nanar saint no he was yeah yeah he was the alvara saint the option is not right this option is not right because that according to this statement that namavalar was a great nanar saint so he was not a great nana, nanars he was a great saint but not of nanar uh, he was alvara saint is it okay yeah samrat is it okay here this statement is about the nanar saint see so he is not from uh, he is he was not nanar saint alvara saint okay so uh, that's why these three statements yeah because of because of this statement statement number 1 2 and 3 these are not correct so that yeah so that the correct answer is option d is it okay is it okay and this is about the this is about you can see this is about the bhakti movement and uh, this question okay okay now this is the th third number question now come to the question number 4 now we are going to uh, discuss the question number 4 where is question number 4 one second i guess here is this side yeah see question number 4 is the practice of yeah uh, please uh, see the about the theory about the theory that is not right about the theory that is not that right ankit yeah as per this statement please see the statement this is about the the statement here according to the ramanuja's theories knowledge was the primary means of liberation from rebirth okay yeah so this is not the this is not the philosophy of ramanujan yeah he disagreed with the shankara's theory the knowledge was the primary means of liberation from rebirth okay ankit okay ankit so that's why this statement is not right so you are getting my point ankit so that's why this question or this uh, statement is not right okay okay now question number 4 here this is the question number 4 consider the uh, one second yeah consider the following statement regarding the sangam period so this question is basically related to sangam period the fourfold varna classification was applicable to ancient tamil society as per the sangam poets okay the more relevant basis of social classification was ananku ananku ya yeah, ananaku sangam literature reflects a belief in sacred or magical forces called kuti the practice of vatak ritual was one in which a defeated king committed ritual suicide by starving himself to death which above this statement is are incorrect again in this question here the here the question is about the which is not correct answer or which is incorrect 1 2 and 3 only 2 3 and 4 only 1 3 and 4 only and 1 2 and 4 only yeah please check 
या प्लीज चेक या प्लीज चेक द क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर दैट वॉट या क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर ओके या दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर दैट वॉट इज विच स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट या द बेसिकली द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द विच स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट ओके इन करेक्ट and this is all about the question this question is all about the sangam period this is related to sangam period and what the uh, which is the right answer of this question yes especially in this question yeah the correct answer please uh, check your answer the correct answer is 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 it means 1 2 and 3 are incorrect so the correct answer is question is option number 4 the practice of uttak ritual was one in which a defeated king committed ritual suicide by starving himself to death 1 2 and 3 are not right only question only uh, option number 4 that is right 1 2 3 are not right why now we are going to discuss <clears throat> no 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 kapil that is not b that is yeah that is not b that is a that is a okay 1 2 and 3 uh please always remember yeah remember my words that i already uh, yeah they already mentioned to you that always be careful about this sentence that this is correct or incorrect because of yeah because of some little mistakes yeah so please uh, you have to be very careful about that the statement is about correct or incorrect so this question is about the incorrect not correct question number option means option 4 is already correct but option 1 2 3 are not correct now i am going to discuss with you and also checking your comments also okay so option 1 option 1 is about the social classification of varna okay so here the statement is about the four fold varna classification was applicable to applicable to ancient tamil society as per the sangam poets no this is not right okay this is not right the social classification of varna was known to sangam poets there is mention of arashar kings vaishyar they were traders or vellar they were farmers so basically in the society we can see that king traders and farmers existence of these three class the uh, brahmanas are also mentioned some of them closely associated with the courts of king and patronized by the ruling elites so that's why however the four fold varna classification had little application to ancient tamil society the jati system was not feature of this society either okay no 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 kapil uh, that is not right yeah that is not right that's why statement number 1 statement number 1 is not correct statement number 2 the more relevant basis of social classification is known as anaku no no that not anaku the more relevant basis of the social classification classification was kuti okay so because of this terminology anaku anaku was not that is kuti okay kuti so please the kuti were a clan based descent groups and were central to the early tamil system of agricultural production dau yeah although associated with the lineage and hereditary occupation there were no real restrictions on inter dining and social interaction among the kuti groups that's why statement number 2 is incorrect okay and why statement statement number 3 is incorrect here's uh, yeah statement number 3 that is about ki that reflects a belief in sacred or magical forces called kuti that is not called kuti that is called yeah that is called anaku yeah that is called ananku a n a n k u the spelling is a n a k u yes see this statement yeah uh, here about the third statement the correct answer is not kuti that is about the anaku is it okay is it okay and see yes this is exactly right the practice of vatak ritual was one in which a defeated king committed ritual suicide while starving himself to death okay and sangam poem especially in sangam poems are yeah pervaded with the warrior ethic 
and the goal of the hero of the puram poems was pukal yet yeah, it means glory or fame and heroic death was greatly valued so that's why yeah that's why this statement is right that is about the vata kirchual that is about the yeah that is about the yeah heroic death okay so that's why the correct answer so please listen the correct answer is a now we are going to the next question is it okay to all of you is it okay kapil vikram rakesh uh now see consider the following statement regarding the cave architecture so basically this question is related to art and architecture so this is about the cave architecture here the statement is unlike the buddhist caves in the western ghats the caves of udaygiri and khandgiri have no congregation halls or rock cut shrines this is the first statement now the second statement is the pravarsena is described as a dwij in ajanta inscription so here in this second statement okay uh, the magnificent rock cut kalashnath temple at elora was built during the region of krishna third which of the above statement is are correct one only one and two only three only one two and three only okay vikram okay uh, vikram rakesh okay so uh, here i am not going to the depth of the question <laughs> yes <laughs> according to you so i am just uh, giving the explanation uh, uh, here the question number 5 this uh, here the answer is the which of the statement is r correct question number 5 the correct answer that is a yeah the question number that is a here the question is ki that which statement is right so your the correct answer is one only why pravarsen is described as dwij in ajanta inscription yeah <clears throat> so here you can see yeah here you can see that vindhya shakti one who was considered as the founder of as the founder of the wakataka dynasty and uh, especially in the ajanta inscriptions yeah that is construction uh, constructed during the time period of hari shena descri describes him as a dwij and praise him praises him for his military achievements that's why uh, statement number 2 is incorrect now the third statement number third that is uh, the magnificent rock cut kalashnath temple at elora was built during the region of uh, Kala, uh, krishna third not krishna third that was krishna first that's why this statement is wrong so only because this statement is about that that in udaygiri and khandgiri have no congregation halls or rock shrine that is exactly right and the second and third statement is not right because of the statement now we are going to the question number 6 consider the following statement regarding the rule of iltutmish so this is about the uh, about the time period of iltutmish iltutmish gave asylum to jalaluddin mangbarni the son of the shah of khwarizm this is the first statement statement number 2 he issued purely arabic coinage of silver tanka okay the question number uh, statement number 3 is he separated the diwane unzarat from a diwane ars it means here uh, you can see that there are uh, here you can see three statement and now we are going to the options yes which of the following statements is are correct so this is all about the correct question or correct uh, not about the incorrect so please be careful about the incorrect or correct statement so this is about the correct statement that is one or that is two one and three two and three okay so your uh, answer should be yeah in especially in this question your answer should be yes that is b only b is the correct answer that is b this is the correct answer and uh, again your answer is ki that why uh, only two see the question is about yes the question is about b it means here you can see yes statement 1 is incorrect yeah statement 1 is incorrect because of in tutmish gave asylum to jalaluddin mangbarni that is not right because il tutmish was not give asylum to jalaluddin mangbarni because uh, because as per iltutmish yeah as per iltutmish yeah yeah 
हाँ एज पर इलतुत मिश ही थॉट दैट इफ ही गिव शेल्टर टू जलालुद्दीन मकबरनी दैट मे बी आफ्टर दैट द चांसेस ऑफ चंगेज खां अटैक्ट मोर After that, that that maybe that increased and maybe he attacked on Delhi Sultanate. That's why he not give asylum to Jalaluddin Mangbarni. So that's why question number one is statement number one is incorrect. Statement number two is incorrect because Il Tutmish in, uh, introduced Arabic coinage into India. Yes, silver tanka weighing one seventy five grams. Yes, okay. Silver tanka, Arabic coinage. स्टेटमेंट नंबर टू दैट इज करेक्ट बिकॉज ही इंट्रोड्यूस अरेबिक क्वाइनेज इन टू इंडिया एंड द सिल्वर टंका दैट वेइंग अबाउट वन सेवेंटी फाइव ग्राम्स बिकम द बिकेम द स्टैंडर्ड क्वाइन इन मेडिवल इंडिया दैट्स वाई द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इज राइट थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इज वाई दिस इज नॉट राइट बिकॉज नॉट इल तुतमिश सेपरेटेड नॉट इल तुतमिश सेपरेटेड दिवाने अंजरात इट मीन्स फिनांस डिपार्टमेंट यस द दीवाने अर्ज दीवाने अर्ज इट मीन्स मिलिट्री डिपार्टमेंट सो हियर यू कैन सी दैट्स वाई दिस दैट दिस इंसिडेंट हैपन ड्यूरिंग द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ बलबन नॉट इन द टाइम पीरियड ऑफ इलतुतमिश दैट्स वाई दिस स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट राइट एंड दिस इज ऑल्सो नॉट राइट ओके सो दिस इज ओनली टू इज द राइट आंसर नाउ वी हैव गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वी आर गोइंग टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट इज अबाउट द uh this is question number 6 now question number 7 this is about the yes this is about the uh, this is uh, this question is basically related to the modern history dalhousi policy of doctrine of laps culminated the process begun by wellesley and his subsidiary alliance and was one of the reasons for revolt of the 1857 which of the following moves were taken by the dalhousi under the doctrine of laps okay deposition of nawab wajid ali shah of awadh on charges of mis government in 1856 dalhousie rejected the claim of dhondupan the adopted sons or son of ex peshwa baji rao second to the annual pension of 8 lakh in 1851 the governor general refused to recognize the succession of the uncle of the deceased nawab of karnataka in 1855 and nawab hood was abolished in the karnataka which of the above statement is are correct so basically so basically this question is about the uh, which question is right one only one and two only two and three only one two and three only so yeah so please uh, this is question number yes this is question number 7 and the question number 7 the correct answer is d so please write that one two and three these three statement are right that's why yeah 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 i uh, राकेश शिखर यस ओके राकेश यस सी वन टू एंड थ्री दिस इज द करेक्ट आंसर बिकॉज अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्टेटमेंट यस अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्टेटमेंट दैट इज दलहौजी पॉलिसी ऑफ डॉक्टर ऑफ लैब्स सो दीज थ्री स्टेटमेंट आर राइट दैट्स वाई योर आंसर दैट इज वन टू एंड थ्री इट मीन्स ऑप्शन नंबर डी इज राइट ओके now uh, question number so please have patience rakesh and uh, rakesh okay 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 so please have patience now i am going to <laughs> yeah 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 please have patience now question number 8 here you can see the question number 8 consider the following statement regarding uh, basavana his principle of kayaka means that there must be an equal income for equal work his spiritual discipline was based on the principle of arivu achara and anubhava he founded the anubhava mantapa which of the following statement is are correct 1 and 2 only 1 and 3 only 5 2 and 3 only 1 2 and 3 only okay so especially in question number 8 you can see yes you can see the question number 8 the correct answer is Two and three. So please write your answer. That is two and three. It means option C is the right answer. Option C is the right answer. Okay. Option C is the right answer. So please uh, write your answer. That is option C. Okay. Yeah. He give uh, according to this statement, his principle of kayaka means there must be an equal income for equal work. that is about 
that is about not about the kayaka that is about the dasoha okay it means equal distribution dasoha it means the equal work yeah dasoha it considered as the yeah it means that equal income for equal work that's why this statement is not right his spiritual discipline was based on the principle of yes exactly he founded the anubhava mantapa so that's why you can see that question number statement 2 and 3 is the right okay now here we are going to the statement uh, question number yes question number 10 <clears throat> no question number uh, one second, seven, eight. Yeah, uh, here is the question which is related to art and culture. Consider the following statement regarding the Patta Chitra paintings. That is about the Patta Chitra. Patta Chitra is a hand painted as well as block printing with vegetable dyes applied on cloth. This is the statement number one. And uh, the statement number second, here you can see the statement number second is Patta Chitra paintings were traditionally drawn by the Mahapatra, the original artist cast in Madhya Pradesh. These paintings become an important art form with the ornamentation of Lord Shiva. Which above the statements are incorrect? Again, you can see that this question is about the incorrect, which this statement is not right. 1 and 2 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 3 only, 1, 2 and 3 only. Okay, so you can see, especially in question number 9, the correct option is 1, 2 and 3. 3 1 2 and 3 yes uh, in statement number 1 you can see in a statement number 1 you can see that Patichitra painting uh, that is about one second yeah uh, Patichitra is hand painted as well as block printing no this is not right block printing that is very famous of Jaipur block printing that is uh, very famous but this is not Patichitra is not a, um, uh, block printing or with vegetable dyes which is applied on cloth that is the this is not right. Patrachitra and is an ancient art of painting on palm leaves. That's why this statement is incorrect. Why second statement is incorrect? Patrachitra paintings were traditionally drawn by the Mahapatra or Maharanas. Yeah, the original artist of Odisha. Here, uh, uh, yes. And these paintings, uh, basically ornamentation, which is related to Lord Jagannatha. Okay, that's why you can see that uh, these three statements, Yes, these three statements, yeah, in this question, option D is right because of neither one, neither two. That's why here you can see that the D statement, sorry, yeah, that the D statement, one, two, and three, this is incorrect. Now, here the question number 10, which of the following statement regarding, regarding Shumang Leela festival is are correct? The 15th All Manipur Shumang Leela Festival was held in Kohima. It is a traditional form of theatre in Nagaland where to the roles of female artists are played by male actors and male characters are played by female artists. So basically uh, just uh, select the correct answer using the quotes that is 1, 2, both 1 and 2, neither 1, neither 2. Yes, especially question number 10. Question number 10, that is the correct answer is that is D, neither one, neither two. Why? Because that is, this is not related to Kohima. So basically this is related to, yes, question number D, this is related to, yes, yes, Manipur. So this is related to Manipur. Okay. And just opposite, uh, it is a traditional form of theatre in Nagaland. No, this is related to Manipur. Roles of female artists are played by male. This statement is right, but the whole statement is not right. Okay. Shumang Leela is a traditional form of theatre in Manipur and the roles of female artists are played by male actors. This is the special characteristics of this, uh, uh, this festival. Okay. Shumang Leela. Now question number, yeah, now question number, uh, one second. Question number 11. Consider the following statement regarding the, no, no. One second, one second. Where is the next question? I guess, uh, just a minute. Please wait for a minute. I guess uh, question number uh, 61. So please uh, come on the question number 61. 
your history question especially is mentioned in uh, question number 61 61 yes yes you can see the question number 61 here the question is which of the following statement regarding the chhatrapati shahu maharaj ji is are incorrect so basically this question is related to chhatrapati shahu ji maharaj Chhatrapati Shahuji Maharaj also known as the Rajshri Sahu was the first Maharaja of princely state of Satara okay and the second statement this is the statement number one now the statement number second he started special schools for the village heads of the Patils to make them into better administration he was greatly influenced by the contribution of social reformer Jyotiba Phule select the correct answer using the quotes statement one only statement b is one and two only statement c is two and three only and statement d is one two and three only okay yeah here is the statement and uh, the statement is about the correct answer a statement is about the which is the correct answer so you have to select the correct answer of this question of this statement so uh, here uh, statement one it means only a uh, in A, you can see, now I am not going to the, yeah, so please you have to scroll your question, yeah, please you have to scroll your question, question number 63, sorry, question number 61, 61, okay, the question is about that which statement is incorrect, not correct, this is not about the correct, this is about the incorrect, what is mentioned in your question, please check. What is mentioned in your question? This is select the incorrect incorrect answer using the codes below. Rakesh, Sweta, Kapil. So please check your uh, question. That question is about correct or incorrect. Please do let me know that either it's correct or incorrect. Incorrect? Okay, okay. Thank you so much, Rakesh. Here you can see that select the incorrect answer using the codes below. Okay. So, the first statement is not right because uh, Chhatrapati Shahuji Maharaj was, uh, yeah, yeah, Chhatrapati Shahuji Maharaj was basically related to the princely state of Kolhapur, not Satara. Statement number one is about the Satara, so that's why Satara is not right. So, uh, incorrect answer is one. So, two and three, okay. So, your answer Yes, yes, your answer is A because in statement 1 that is the princely state of Satara that is not right, that is not right. Anshika, you got uh, the PDF from GS score, yeah GS score, we have our uh, telegram channel, we have our website so uh, you will get the answer from the, our telegram channel or our website also, okay Anshika. So please check that one is incorrect and second and third is uh, right that uh, he started a special school for the village of heads of parties to make them into better administration he was the greatly influenced by the social reformer jyoti bai phule okay now question number 62 consider the following statement regarding the mangar masakre this is about the mangar masakre okay shruti uh, that's why i am asking to you ki please check that is a correct or incorrect if is yeah, yeah, if is correct, so please, yeah, please, uh, usko sudhar le. that is incorrect. Okay, Shruti, Shruti, please check your answer. Agar waha incorrect, likha, correct likha hua, to please, us statement, maap usko kya kar dijiye, usse sudhar dijiye. Question is about that word, which is incorrect. Now, consider the following statement about Mangar Masakre. In 1913, soldiers of the British Indian Army fired indiscriminately on Bheel protested who were demanding the abolition of bonded labor. The movement was initiated by Amrit Lal Thakahar. Okay? Bheel's speak a language of Dravidian origin. Which of the above statement is are correct? One only, one and two only, one and three only, one, two and three only. Yeah, one, two and three only. Okay. Okay. Now, your correct answer is C, 1 and 3 only, okay. The correct answer is 1 and 3. It means in 1913, we can see that soldiers of the British Indian Army fired indiscriminately. Yes, this is the right, indiscriminately on Bheel protester who were demanding 
on the abolition of bonded labor approximately 1500 bhil tribals and forest dwellers died in this incident which came to be known as the mangar massacre okay yeah and yeah this uh, according to this statement bhil speak a language of dravidian okay yeah that is about that which is correct answer yeah which is correct answer no correct answer is c correct answer is c not d 1 and 3 1 and 3 1 and 3 please check 1 and 3 okay या भील्स जो है बेसिकली यहां पर आप देख सकते हैं कि दैट जो है भील्स कुड बी आइडेंटिफाइड एज वन ऑफ द द्रविडियन रेशियल ट्राइब ऑफ वेस्टर्न इंडिया एंड बिलोंग टू ऑस्ट्रोइड ग्रुप ऑफ ट्राइब्स दे स्पीक अ लैंग्वेज ऑफ द्रविडियन ऑरिजिन दैट्स व्हाई दिस यस एग्जैक्टली सम्राट भील लैंग्वेज इज ऑफ ऑस्ट्रिक रीजन ऑफ द्रविडियन लैंग्वेज सो बेसिकली यू कैन सी या बेसिकली यू कैन सी दैट्स वाई दिस स्टेटमेंट इज राइट द मूवमेंट वॉज इनिशिएटेड बाई गुरु गोविंद गिरी ओके सो गुरु गोविंद या या गुरु गोविंद गिरी वॉज रेज फ्रॉन्ट अगेंस्ट द लोकल रूलर्स हु वेर फोर्सिंग टू द व्हील्स इन टू द अनपेड लेबर टू पे हेवी टैक्सेस एंड हाई रेट्स ऑफ लैंड रेवेन्यू नो 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 ओके अभिषेक सो प्लीज करेक्ट यूर आंसर द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इज सी वन एंड थ्री बिकॉज द क्वेश्चन इज अबाउट द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट विच ऑफ द अब स्टेटमेंट इज राइट so here is the language of dravidian origin so that is this is the right answer and this is also in 1913 this is also the right answer the second statement is not right because it is started by the guru gobind singh okay yes guru gobind ji that's why this option is not right okay abhishek now uh, here you can see question number 63 consider the following statement consider the following statement treaty of salabai in 1781 forced by mahadaji sindh mahadaji sindhya to accept the terms set by the company statement number 2 is the by the treaty of besin velesley forced peshwa put to himself completely in the care of the british and the peshwa could not enter into the relation without consulting the british okay treaty of devgaon was signed with the holkers of indore During the Second Anglo-Mysore War, Hyder got no help from the French beyond a supply of military stores when he attacked the Carnatic in July 1780. Okay, in July 1780. Okay, <clears throat> is it okay? See, uh, this is this uh, this is the question. yeah this is question question number 63 and here here you can see the option and here you can see the option one second yeah which of the above statement is are correct so basically this question is related to the correct 1 2 and 3 only 1 2 3 and 4 only 1 2 4 and 5 only 1 2 3 4 5 only so which is the right answer yeah which is the right answer which is the right answer abhishek that already discuss that already discuss please check already discuss question number yeah question number you can see question number that which above which of the above statement is are correct 1 2 and 3 only 1 2 3 and 4 only 1 2 4 and 5 only 1 2 4 and 5 only okay 1 2 4 and 5 only okay the problem is that Uh, especially in option here i al already i am going to discuss that the problem is that that the uh, especially here you can see that option that uh, one second one second here you can see the treaty of salbai yeah in 1781 that is not right that is 1782 so please you can uh, check your answer that is 1782 please check and please uh, correct that question that is 1782 okay that is 1782 yes this is not 1781 but according to maybe might yeah yeah that is not right 
बट मे बी स्पेशली इन योर यू पी एस सी एग्जामिनेशन इफ सम हाउ इज दिस काइंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन रेज इन योर एग्जामिनेशन सो वट यू हैव टू डू मे बी दैट इज कि नियर अबाउट मे बी सम टाइम दैट क्वेश्चन विच इज रिलेटेड और विच इज नियर अबाउट द ऑप्शन सो बट एग्जैक्टली द आंसर इज सेवनटीन एटी टू द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट यस द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट स्पेशली इन ऑप्शन स्पेशली इन ऑप्शन दैट इज यू कैन सी वन सो in where because uh, this uh, statement the statement uh, which is not right but closer that uh, about that ki which is the close answer so it should be c uh, about close answer but if uh, here uh, not one is not right yes one is not right and rather than 2 4 and 5 okay so please correct your answer now uh, question number yes question number uh, 64 Which of the following statement मैं आपका समय ज्यादा नहीं लूंगी Yes, 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 yes. Uh, which of the following statements regarding रिगार्डिंग Act एक्ट इज आर करेक्ट दिस एक्ट इफेक्ट इफेक्टिवली ऑथराइज द गवर्नमेंट टू इम्प्रेजन एनी पर्सन सस्पेक्टेड ऑफ टेररिज्म एंड गिव द इम्पीरियल ऑथोरिटीज द पावर ऑफ स्ट्रिक्ट कंट्रोल ऑफ द प्रेस ओके नेहरू नेम द रॉलेट एक्ट एज ब्लैक एक्ट सर डी ई वाचा दिनशा एलिच वाचा सुरेंद्रनाथ बनर्जी तेज बहादुर सप्रू एंड श्रीनिवास शास्त्री अपोज गांधी जी मूव ऑफ स्टार्टिंग रॉलेट सत्याग्रह सेलेक्ट द करेक्ट आंसर यूजिंग द कोर्ट्स ओके वन ओनली वन एंड टू ओनली वन एंड थ्री ओनली वन टू एंड थ्री ओनली ओके सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज यस हेयर योर करेक्ट आंसर इज दैट इज ऑप्शन दैट इज सी वन एंड थ्री ओके वन एंड थ्री हियर द स्टेटमेंट इज अबाउट द करेक्ट आंसर दैट इज जस्ट लाइक अबाउट रॉलेट एक्ट या दिस इज अबाउट द वट इज द करेक्ट आंसर अबाउट रॉलेट दैट इज कि इफ समबडी इज सस्पेक्टेड लाइक इफ ही इज इंडल्ज ही इज इंडल्ज इन एनी कॉन्स्पिरेसी अगेंस्ट द ब्रिटिशर सो दैट या सो दैट बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एक्ट दे अरेस्ट दैट पीपल दे ब्रिटिशर्स हैव पावर टू अरेस्ट दैट पर्सन so that the statement one is right and uh, sir uh, this is about that ki that the, uh, sir uh, dinsha vacha surendranath banerji tej bahadur sapru shrinivas shastri oppose gandhi ji move starting yes exactly nehru named the rollet act as black act not nehru named the rollet act as black act it was named by the gandhi ji okay it was named by the gandhi ji so this is the Now question number sixty-five. Consider the following statements regarding the non-cooperation movement and Khilafat movement. So this statement or this question is basically related to non-cooperation movement and including Khilafat movement. Statement number one: Khilafat leaders were eager for Hindu-Muslim unity, and nineteen nineteen Muslim League resolution called for the giving up of the Bakri clutter of cows. Statement number two: Gandhi did not support Mohani's call for the boycott of British goods at the Khilafat Conference of November 1919. Statement number three: Jinnah described Hunter Commission Majority Report on the Punjab dis disturbances as page after page of thinly disguised, disguised official whitewash. Statement number four: It was the first mass scale movement launched as the attainment of the Swaraj. Which of the statement are correct? okay so that is the 1 2 and 4 only 1 2 and 3 only 1 3 and 4 only 1 2 3 and 4 only which is the right answer okay which is the right answer so the correct answer is here you can see that 1 2 and 4 okay 1 2 and 4 why not 3 is uh, correct because jinnah not describe about the hunter commission so basically third is not right because this statement was given by the gandhi ji okay gandhi ji told that bitterly described that the gandhi ji as that page by page of thinly disguised official white was of hunter commission that is which is related to the punjab disturbance so that this statement is not right because of yahan par jo statement hai wo sahi nahi hai because of the yes so aapka jo answer hoga that is the 1 2 and 4 okay maybe this is your last question okay so now this is completed uh, this is all about the history question okay rakesh now now uh, this is done yeah this is done from my side so uh, so hope you all uh, check your answer and please correct if your answer is wrong so please correct your answer okay rakesh abhishek samrat sejal 
so thank you so much to all of you now i am going to yes uh, yeah uh, now this session is going to the next next level that is the sir sir please yeah thank you so much to all of you yeah yeah thank you so much and uh, please check your answer thank you Sound clearer. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Saurabh Mishra. I am the faculty of economy, Indian economy section here. Uh, now uh, let us see uh, Indian economy section. Start in your question paper. It starts from the forty one. Let us go there. Until now, whoever is preparing for this year's prelims examination, you all know the importance of uh, economy section because it gives you around. 15 to 20 question every year and uh, it is one of the areas where it is a deal breaker because why I say that because if you have conceptual clarity in economic concepts you can attempt the questions very easily and people who do not have the conceptual clarity they struggle a lot so economy becomes a major area of concern uh, in the prelims examination so you will have to in the last uh, leg of your preparation you need to focus on the conceptual clarity on different concepts which is in your syllabus and try to interlink with the current affairs because some of the statements you will see that UPSC is taking from current affairs they can frame a question on factual basis as well uh, th although the questions are not very much factual in nature but you will have to see how to eliminate those options where there are very much factual information so we'll try to see that we have created the questions in this paper where uh, it resembles UPSC's pattern a lot. So one by one, we'll see the questions very quickly, right? The first question is 40. First question, uh, capital account convertibility would mean no restriction on the amount of rupees one can convert into foreign currency to enable Indian resident to acquire for any foreign asset. Now you see, uh, there is current account convertibility capital account convertibility so you all know that in india we have current account convertibility fully but capital account convertibility is not full right so uh, what happens if we have capital account convertibility anyone from outside also can invest in the infrastructure projects here so the currency conversion may happen easily right so that kind of flexibility is not given in capital account convertibility so it is basically defining that if capital account convertibility is there what will be the impact of it right so basically uh, one can convert into foreign currency to enable an indian resident to acquire any foreign asset yes that is a right statement second fully accessible route is an uh, arrangement through which any non-resident can invest in specified government securities without any risk. now this came uh, around uh, 2020 april uh, uh, rbi has issued a path for uh, investment in capital account convertibility right so here through this path fully accessible route which is applied on specified government securities in those only you can have the full convertibility not all so this statement becomes also true so uh, it is asking for correct statements so c would be the answer here both one and two moving to the next question which of the following statement is incorrect you will have to be very careful in watching whether they are asking correct or incorrect right so here they are asking incorrect regarding financial markets now see the statements money market deals with the generation of fund with a maximum maturity of one year and the capital market deals with the generation of fund for a period of one year or longer correct statement right you know uh, that in money market what are the tools here you can take example of treasury bills right now in treasury bills uh, what is uh, 
the you can say time period it can be issued for 14 days it can be issued for uh, you can say 364 days so there is variation in that but it is below one year time so first statement is correct in that regard now let us look at the second statement here financial market are exclusively regulated by Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI. Now, in financial market, there are two markets, money market as well as, uh, you can say, capital market. So, money market is governed by RBI and the capital market is governed by various institutions, even the Ministry of Finance plus RBI plus SEBI, all of them regulate that, right? So, the B statement becomes wrong here. What is they are asking? They are asking for a wrong statement. So B is the wrong statement here. The rest two are the correct one. Treasury bills are the money market instrument. Yes, I gave the example that for various tenures you can uh, the government can issue treasury bills, which is part of money market. While dated government security GSEC are the capital market instrument. Right statement. Shares are financial instruments that are not transacted in the money market. Yes, they are transacted in capital market right so which is the wrong statement here b next question 45th which of the following statement is are correct with respect to certificate of deposits now certificate of deposits are a kind of savings but for a fixed tenure so the interest is a little bit higher than the savings right let us see the statements here it differs from saving account because the money must remain untouched for the entirety of their term or risk penalty fee or lost interest. Yes, this is right regarding certificate of deposit. Second statement you see, it can be issued by scheduled commercial banks, regional rural banks and local area banks. Now in this statement, the local area banks are wrong. They cannot issue certificate of deposit. So because of this term, it the second statement becomes wrong. The regional rural bank and commercial uh, scheduled commercial bank, yes, they can issue certificate of deposit, but not local area bank. So second statement is wrong. Third statement, the minimum deposit that could be accepted for a single subscriber should not be less than 5 lakhs. No, it is for commercial papers, 5 lakhs. Uh, for certificate of deposit, it is 1 lakh. So now you see this is factual question, right? Statement is factual. So UPSC also tries to frame questions in one of the statement will be conceptual based one of the statement may be factual based so so that you have a holistic understanding of the topic right so here what they are asking they are asking for correct answer code so what is the correct st statement one so answer would be a only now the next question 46th see the consider the following statement regarding fiscal consolidation policy here they are talk they have given three statements here first is fiscal dominance means crowding out of private sector because of higher government borrowing no fiscal dominance it means that the monetary policy tools are being used to support the government in their fiscal fiscal targets so that is the fiscal dominance now it is not about crowding out of private uh, funds or private borrowings so the first statement itself becomes wrong. If you see the second statement, as per the FRBM Act, medium term expenditure framework statement is presented in the budget session of the parliament. FRBM Act do requires few statements to be uh, presented before the parliament, but this is not one of them. Now the medium term expenditure framework statement is presented day after the session of budget is been concluded in the parliament right so the second statement becomes wrong in that case third statement if you see it is an effort to reduce current account deficit now it is what it is referring to it is referring to fiscal consolidation policy now fiscal consolidation policy has the target to reduce the fiscal deficit and stabilize the economy right it is not only related for current account deficit. The third statement also becomes wrong here that it is 
the effort is to reduce the fiscal deficit overall. So, what would be the right statement here? None. So, what they are asking? Which of the following statements given above are incorrect? So, all of them are incorrect. What would be the answer here? C. 1, 2 and 3. Now, this was 46th. Now, let us see 47th. With respect to the monetary tools of RBI to control inflation, consider the following statement. Now, again, this is a very basic question, conceptual question based on inflation. Let us see the statements and see how we can address this. <clears throat> now, first statement here, while banks earn interest on CRR deposit with RBI, no such interest is paid by RBI to banks on SLR deposits. Now, you will see UPSC generally try to swap the concepts. Now, here they have swapped CRR with SLR. Now, when banks keep their money in CRR, they do not get any kind of interest on that. But in SLR, they do get interest on that, right? So, here the first statement is wrong. Why? Because CRR and SLR are reversed here in this statement. Second, you see, CRR is required to be maintained only by the public sector banks under RBI Act of 1934. Is it right? No. Why? Because all the scheduled bank, be it public sector bank, be it private bank, be it foreign banks, all of them are required to keep CRR with the RBI. Fine. So, second statement is also wrong. Now, look at the third statement. A 75 basis point decrease in SLR would have an inflationary impact on the economy. Now, here, if you understand the concept of SLR, what it is? It is keeping aside a chunk of money from the banks <coughs> for a difficult situation of the bank in future, right? So, now here you see if the SLR is increased, bank will have less money to lend. So, that means in market, less money will be there. So, it will be deflationary. If we decrease SLR, here what we are doing? 75 basis point decrease. Decreasing SLR means banks will have more funds to lend outside. That means in the market, supply of money will increase. When the supply of money will increase, it is inflationary trend, right? So, the statement 3 is right here. 1 and 2 is wrong. They are asking for correct. So, 3 only. C will be the answer here. Now, let us look at the next question. Meanwhile, let me check that if you have any doubts and you are mentioning here. <coughs> okay, Sejal, I will go back to uh, 42 and 43. Samrat, uh, why D is wrong? Which question you are referring to? Please mention that. Okay, Sejal has already answered that question of Samrat. Fine. Shares are included in capital markets. Fine. Now, let us look at the 48th question. Consider the following statement regarding blue bond security. Now, blue bonds, if you understand blue bonds are a part of green bonds, green initiative for sustainable development, where we are looking at, uh, you can say specific sectors, which is related to oceanic resource mining and sustainable fishing. Now, these securities can be utilized for various blue economy related activities, including oceanic resource mining and sustainable fishing. Yes, this is right. Second, you see, at present, the blue economy comprises less than 2% of India's economy. Now, this is also a factual statement. Here, you need to know that it is nearly 4%, more than 4%, not 2%. So, it makes second statement wrong here. Now, they are subset of green bonds. Yes. In 2018, the Republic of Seychelles launched the world's first sovereign blue bond. Yes, this, this is also right statement. So, if you 
uh, know that the second statement is wrong because it is nearly 4% and if you eliminate the second statement you can reach to the right answer which is C 1, 3 and 4 only. Consider the following statement, 49th, consider the following statement regarding hybrid securities development and regulation in India. Now, hybrid securities means that this, uh, it is combination of the portfolio, right? Like the example you can take real estate and infrastructure investment securities, where we can invest, uh, you can say, in these particular fields. So, there is separate shares for that. So, those are called hybrid security. First, you see first statement, an advisory committee on hybrid security under Arvind Panagariya has been set up by RBI. Now, this is again a factual statement which is wrong. It was set up under the uh, leadership of K.V. Kamath. So, the first statement, if you know this, then you can only eliminate that. It is a factual information. Now, hybrid securities combine both debt and equity characters. Yes, both debt and equity is considered in hybrid uh, securities. Real estate investment and infrastructure in investments are classified as hybrid securities, correct. Fourth statement if you see, hybrid securities are non-convertible and cannot be traded on stock exchange. No, it is wrong, it can be traded. So here, and these are convertible uh, securities as well. So fourth statement is wrong here. Fifth statement, hybrid may give investor a fixed or floating rate of return but pay return only as dividend and not as uh, interest. So, if you eliminate the fourth, fourth statement from the options given, let us see the options. Fourth from the option, so you have B or C as an option and all already you uh, i said that kv kamath was the leader uh, leadership under which the committee was formed so one is also wrong so statement or option b is correct here two and three only now the fifth question fifth question look at this now this is one of the question upc also tries to frame a question like this now see here are five statements given now, if you uh, see this question and you do not know anything about counter cyclical capital buffer, if you have read the Basel uh, 3 norms and you have read about it, you can attempt the question. But sometimes it happens that in the examination you see a particular concept which you have not read and there is five statement. So, so it create an added pressure that you do not know the answer, right? But in these kind of question, you just try to read the options and through commonsensical approach also you can reach to the answer. Let us, this is a good example of that kind of question. See statement 1, counter cyclical capital buffer. Now you see buffer is always kept for difficult situation. If you understand this much, the any buffer amount is always kept for a difficult situation. If you have this much of clarity, you can attempt this question. See. Counter, uh, counter cyclical capital buffer is a part of capital adequacy norms for banks in a country under the Basel 3 framework. Now, if you know this, definitely it is a right statement. I'll, I'll draw your attention to the wrong statement. See the second one. CCCB differs from other form of capital adequacy in that it works to help a bank to take advantage of an economic boom. Now, as I told you, any buffer is kept for difficult situa situation. So, how a buffer fund can be utilized to take advantage of an economic boom? So, this statement becomes wrong. It is for a difficult situation. Capital uh, adequacy ratio is maintained so that in case of a bank run, bank will have a certain amount of buffer to take care of the depositors. right? So, here statement 2 is clearly wrong. It is not for taking advantage of an economic boom. So, and now if you see the combinations given here, from the commonsensical understanding, you can say it is not for taking advantage. So, statement 2 is wrong. You see here, only one option is there where statement 2 is not there. 
so it is c 1 3 4 and 5 only you can directly attempt if you have read the basel 3 norms and read about uh, the buffer uh, fund here you can definitely attempt the question but i wanted to explain you that if you have not read that still through your commonsensical understanding you can attempt these kind of question and this will happen in your final examination also because upsc will frame these kind of question where they are just checking how cool and calm you are in the difficult situation if you read the options without knowing the concept just by seeing the name you can through common sense attempt these kind of questions right now it was 50 one of so uh, someone said that 42nd and 43rd question is missed let us look that uh, look at that okay 42nd uh, which of the following is are the function of apida set up under the agriculture and processed food products export development authority act of 1985 now generally upsc ask questions regarding the functions of these kind of uh, bodies right so here uh, you know that apida is related to food products and export related to export so with that much of understanding see the statement collect and collate data regarding food consumption and contaminants in the food now with your commonsensical understanding also you know that contaminants in food and food consumption patterns are seen by fssai right now they have the mandate to see the contamination in the food not the apida so statement one becomes wrong Second statement, fixing the standard and specification for the fruits, vegetables and dairy products for the purpose of export. Yes, it is the responsibility of EPIDA. Third, carrying out infections, uh, inspection of meat and meat products in slaughterhouses and processing plants. Since the meat is also exported, it comes under the ambit of EPIDA. If you read the functions or responsibilities of EPIDA, meat uh, inspection is also there. Two and three is correct collection of statistics from the dealers and manufacturers of gore gum rubber and alcoholic beverage this is not under the uh, functions of EPIDA. Uh, rubber etc is dealt by the rubber board of india so uh, only two and three statement is correct regarding the uh, functions of epida here what is the state answer two and three b 43rd okay consider the following statement number one the total money supply in an economy includes the banker's deposit with the reserve bank of india now you know uh, different types of money we have studied m0 m1 m2 m3 m4 now here total money supply is related to <coughs> m3 and m3 uh, if you see the formula m3 does not include banker's deposit now bankers deposit is in high level money which is m0 so the first statement becomes wrong second statement quantitative easing is adopted to increase the interest rate and to decrease the money supply no in quantitative easing uh, rbi does not tweak with the uh, you can say interest rate they buy government securities and open securities from the open market this is a special type of monetary uh, tool you can say monetary uh, policy tool where they buy the securities and throw out money in the open market be it government securities or private securities so that is a way of increasing the money supply in the market but not tweaking the interest rate so here the statement one and statement two both becomes wrong so answer would be d now the rest few topics or few questions which we have is from question number 80 28 uh, 
1.579 see question number 80 it is related to uh, uh, international initiative so these kind of question also comes where uh, they can frame a question on international scheme or national scheme consider the following statement regarding the reskilling revolution initiative now these kind of questions uh, sometimes become difficult if you have not read the current affairs uh, where the scheme has been discussed right so it can become difficult to take a guess here so if you know then only you can attempt it it is an oecd initiative which india joined as a founding member now reskilling revolution initiative it is initiative of world economic forum not oecd now from common sense also you can understand that world economic forum is focusing of late a lot on reskilling in the uh, terms of industrial revolution 4 that how different countries should perform through changing the or understanding the new way of technologies so here role of oecd is not there world economic forum so statement one becomes wrong here it is a public private platform to give 1 million people the skills they need by 2030 in the age of fourth industrial revolution yes it is a right statement third statement if you see now here the question is asked on reskilling revolution initiative and the third statement they are taking a local initiative of ministry of tribal affairs which is going online as leaders the scheme name is goal is helping india fulfill the goal set under this initiative now here it is also a reskilling for tribal people and it is run by the tribal ministry now if this goal initiative is fulfilled definitely reskilling will happen and it is the overall agenda of reskilling revolution initiative so here third statement is also correct here we are combining two different scheme international and national and trying to create a synergy between their objective right so the first statement is wrong second and third is correct so answer would be c 2 and 3 81 in the context of input market and output market consider the following statement input market and output market here read the statement one all markets are either factor markets where consumer make their purchase or goods and service market where businesses obtain the resources they need now look at here the concepts are again swapped upsc generally tries to frame statements where concepts are swapped here second in the factor market businesses are sellers and households are buyers in factor market generally what happens the sellers are the householders and the buyers are the businesses while in the goods and service market households are seller and businesses are buyers so here also the concepts they are swapped so this becomes a wrong statement now third statement if you see it is asking you the broader concept of this fa factor market what do you mean by factor market the factor market are the defining characteristics of a central economic planning no factor markets are the characteristics of market economy which works on demand and supply freely so uh, central economic planning is the characteristics of socialist economy where a center center central authority will control the supply it is not free for demand and supply to decide which happens in the market economy so here the factor markets are not the defining characteristics of central economic planning it is of free market so which dictates supply and assign resource accordingly so here you need to understand the concept of socialist economy where central economic planning is done by controlling the supply and in factor market this happens based on demand and supply no external control is there right so what they are asking right statement or wrong statement for 81 which of the sta above statements are incorrect all of them are incorrect so answer will be c here 
82 consider the following statement regarding the concept of purchasing power parity now you know purchasing power parity is to compare two different currencies of two different countries to understand that from a particular amount of money how how much products or a basket of product one can buy so it is a kind of leveler for to in un, terms of understanding that whether say suppose for uh, one uh, dollar it is uh, something around 75 uh, rupees na, right now but the purchasing power parity will be different you can buy a lot of things in one dollar but could not buy in one rupee so there is a difference between two countries uh, money there now this purchasing power parity is used by different international organizations to make economic policies so first statement if you see <clears throat> both the international monetary fund imf and oecd use the weights based on ppp metrics to make predictions and recommend economic policy yes they use the data of uh, ppp to uh, make economic policies and recommendations so first statement is correct one second statement ppp incorporates transport cost tax differences and government interventions and non traded services as well for comparing the prices this is factually wrong uh, these conditions are not utilized in ppp uh, comparison if in two countries there is a difference between uh, the taxes or you can say the government intervention are there or transport these factors are not included so this second statement becomes wrong here so what would be the answer they are asking for correct statement so it will be only one which means a now for from economy section the last question is 83 consider the following statement with reference to employment in india generally we uh, talk about periodic uh, labor force survey and based on that data we take a lot of decisions in the government uh, but there is one more survey which is called all india quarterly establishment based employment survey which was released by ministry of statistics and program implementation now this survey is not done by ministry of statistics and program implementation it is released by ministry of labor so the first statement becomes wrong again it is a factual information you must know that who releases that so here the first statement becomes wrong second statement if you see the aqees provides employment scenarios for the demand side whereas periodic labor force survey provides information on the supply sides this is right periodic labor survey provides you from the supply side uh, that how many people are willing to participate in the labor force and who are participating in the labor force but from this survey you get the employment scenario from the demand side that whether there is a requirement of employment or not so both the side demand side and supply side can be understood properly if you consider the information from these two surveys together okay aqees and periodic labor force survey uh, so here the statement one is wrong two is correct so answer would be one here a question number 44 uh, option d why is it correct okay samrat uh, i should not go back to 44 now to see the questions it will take time what i'll do i'll see the question and uh, drop you a comment here fine so these were the uh, questions related to the economy section uh, as i told you earlier that uh, economy is a section where you need to have a little bit of conceptual clarity some commonsensical understanding also because a lot of questions you can attempt through elimination if you understand few concepts based on that you can derive some information and eliminate some statement so try to implement that when you are practicing different mocks there and try to incorporate the current happenings from the basic core concepts uh, because only three types of questions are formed here in the economy section one conceptual based one is factual statements and another is the correlation of current affairs uh, which provides the context to the uh, concepts given in the economy syllabus right so uh, all the best to everyone who are preparing for the prelims this year 
Uh, now next uh, section of environment and science and tech will be taken by Rajvardhan sir. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. So uh, firstly, we'll start with science and technology questions. Uh, so question number 11 is a science and technology question. So from question 11, we have SNT questions. Let us start with question number 11. <laughs> so first question from science and technology. Consider the following statements regarding the fundamental forces in the universe, right? So you must be aware there are four fundamental forces in the universe. First is strong nuclear force. Second is electromagnetic force. Third is weak nuclear force. And fourth is gravitational force, right? So these are, these are uh, the fundamental forces. And from strong nuclear force to gravitational force, uh, strength goes on decreasing. Right, so that means strong nuclear force is the force which is uh, which has highest strength. There, thereafter, it is electromagnetic. Then it is weak nuclear force, and then it is gravitational force. So let us consider the statements first. Each fundamental force has its own corresponding boson. The nuclear force is carried by the uh, by the gluon, and the electromagnetic force by photon. Now let us consider that you don't know about the fundamental or the corresponding bosons of fundamental forces. Right? Just uh, let us consider that you are not aware of the uh, bosons of fundamental forces that we have in nature. So we will skip this particular statement. We will come to sta uh, statement number two. Second statement is gravity is the weakest force even weaker than the weak nuclear force. Right? So if you are aware of only fundamental forces, you will be able to solve this question. Right? So amongst four fundamental forces, yes, gravity is the weak uh, or the weakest force it is even weaker than weak nuclear force right so second statement is a correct statement third the electromagnetic force is the strongest force and has infinite range like gravity now third statement is an incorrect statement why it is incorrect because electromagnetic force is not the strongest fundamental force it is strong nuclear force which is strongest and that's why third statement is incorrect. Electromagnetic force is not the strongest. It is second strongest, you can say, after strong nuclear force, we have electromagnetic force. And yes, electromagnetic force has infinite range like gravity, right? So this statement, third statement is incorrect. Second is correct. Now, if you remove third, you'll be able to eliminate B and D, right? You'll be able to eliminate B and D. And now you know that second statement is correct. So obviously answer should be C, right? Answer of this question is uh, C one and two only. Now we'll, we'll discuss statement number one. Statement number one says that each fundamental force has its corresponding boson, correct statement it is, right? And uh, the strong nuclear force has a corresponding, uh, corresponding boson called as gluon. Then electromagnetic force has its corresponding boson called as photon. Then weak nuclear force has its corresponding boson called as W and Z boson. And for gravity, as of now, we have not found the corresponding boson, but it should be gravi uh, graviton, right? It should be graviton. Graviton should be the uh, boson for gravitational force, right? So on the basis of this, you can easily mark this question. One and two are correct. Answer is C, one and two only. Question number 11, answer is C. Right, question number 11, answer is C. Next question now, question number 12. Question number 12 is, consider the following statements. First, galaxies in our universe are rotating with such speed 
that the gravity generated by their observable matter could not possibly hold them together. Right? So, this statement is a base on the basis of which we have inferred presence of presence of dark matter right on the basis of this statement because galaxies are rotating so fast that the gravitational force or the gravity of the known matter of galaxies won't be able to hold the galaxies together and that's why there must be some other matter and that matter is called as dark matter which helps gravi uh, which helps gravitational force or which helps or which generates such a gravitational force which allows gravi uh, galaxies to be held together right and first statement that's why it's correct on the basis of first statement we have inferred the presence of dark matter first statement is correct second unlike black holes the dark matter does not interact with the electromagnetic force that is it does not absorb reflect or emit light right so this statement is a correct statement we know the presence of uh, we know the presence of uh, black holes but we do not know the presence of dark matter we have just inferred it on the basis of first statement that we have discussed right and that's why uh, second statement is also a correct statement unlike black holes dark matter do not interact and that's why uh, that's why we do not have the uh, proof for their existence so second statement is also correct third dark energy does not have any local gravitational effect but rather a global effect on the universe as a whole right so of the total universe 68% we have dark energy, 27% is dark matter and rest of the 5% is observable matter, right? And third statement regarding dark energy is a correct statement. It does not have a, any local gravitational effect. It has global gravitation, not global, uh, rather a global effect on the universe, right? So third statement is also a correct statement. Third statement is also a correct statement. Fourth statement dark energy is distributed unevenly throughout the universe in space as well as in time now this statement is an incorrect statement right so dark energy that we have inferred is evenly distributed in space as well as time right there is no uneven distribution of dark energy it is evenly distributed in space as well as in time and that's why fourth statement is an incorrect statement so only first three statements regarding dark matter and dark energy are correct and that's why answer is 1, 2 and 3 mentioned in option B. Question number, question number 12, answer is B. Next question now. Next is consider the following statements. First, antimatter, antimatter particles share the same mass as their matter counterparts but qualities such as electric charge are opposite. Right. So, uh, apart from the matter that we know, there is also antimatter, there is also a presence of antimatter which also consists of various subatomic particles and also the, uh, the, sub, uh, the, uh, the properties of subatomic particles. But the properties like electric charge and magnetic field or magnetic spin is opposite of the particles that constitute matter. And that's why first statement is a correct statement, Anti antimatter particles share the mass as their matter counterparts and uh, the qualities like electric charge are opposite fine for example for electrons which is a particle of matter we have antimatter we have a particle in antimatter called as positron right so that is the correct statement first statement is correct statement regarding the uh, 13th question second statement so if first is correct you can eliminate b second second question matter and antimatter particles if they come in contact, annihilate one another, leaving behind pure energy, right? So that is also a correct statement. As they have opposite charges, if they come together, they will annihilate each other, releasing pure energy, right? So second statement is also correct statement. Third, uh, there is far more matter than antimatter in the universe, right? So this statement is also a correct statement because uh, the Big Bang the Big Bang event. Now, this, this statement is not, uh, is, uh, has not been evaluated as of now and that is being uh, done by various scientists across the world, right? So, after Big Bang, uh, there must be, there must be more matter compared to antimatter and that's why we are able to see various objects that we have around, fine? And that's why 
after big bang there there is far more matter than antimatter in the universe so this statement is a correct statement but as of now this has not been evaluated because we know that for a matter there is antimatter so if we have more more matter then why there is less antimatter after big bang so this question has not been evaluated as of now fine but this statement is correct we have more matter compared to antimatter so all these three statements related to mat, uh, antimatter are correct and that's why answer is d 1 2 and 3 question number 13 answer is d next question now next question what are the uh, differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes right so uh, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells we know that prokaryotic cells are those cells which do not have nucleus and uh, membrane bound cell organelles and uh, prokaryotic cells examples are uh, are uh, bacteria right even archaea are the examples of prokaryotes on the other hand eukaryotes have uh, have cell nucleus as well as uh, membrane bound cell organelles and the examples of eukaryotes are uh, plant cells animal cells fungi etc right so let us consider the statements first unlike eukaryotes prokaryotes do not have true nucleus so that is the uh, point of difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes in prokaryotes we do not have true nucleus first statement is correct second unlike eukaryotes prokaryotes always reproduce asexually right so this statement is also a correct statement unlike eukaryotes and this is also a point of difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes uh, prokaryotes always reproduce asexually there is asexual reproduction in uh, in prokaryotic cells so first two statements are correct third prokaryotes are always unicellular right this part is correct prokaryotes are always unicellular for example bacteria archaea they are always unicellular second uh, or next part whereas eukaryotes are always multicellular now this statement is an incorrect statement there can be there can be unicellular eukaryotes as well for example yeast yeast uh, which is a kind of fungi is an uh, is a uh, is a multi or is an unicellular eukaryote right yeast or uh, or uh, even algae they are they are unicellular eukaryotes so eukaryotes can be both unicellular as well as multicellular and that's why this statement third statement becomes incorrect fine so only first two statements are correct answer of this question is a 1 and 2 only question number 14 answer is a 15th question consider the following statements so uh, this question is in the form of assertion and reason so let us consider the uh, a assertion mutation usually does not have major consequences right so this statement is a correct statement mutations that means change in the genetic pattern of the uh, of the dna or rna is referred as mutation and this mutation is not always always harmful right so usually uh, usually mutation does not have major consequences right so certain mutations may lead to have uh, harmful consequences but majority of the mutations are not harmful why we are going to discuss it in reason r most mutations occur in somatic cells like muscle cells or skin cells right so somatic cells are body cells that means these somatic cells do not produce gametes like egg cells or sperm cells and uh, when mutations occur in in somatic cells like muscle cells and skin cells those mutations more often than not have no uh, ill effects or no side effects and as a result of that we can conclude that mutations which are majority of times occur in, occur in somatic cells do not have consequences which are negative in nature right so a is correct that means mutations usually do not have major consequences r is also correct most mutations occur in somatic cells like muscle cells or or skin cells why r is correct because uh, most of the cells in our bodies are somatic cells only and that's why uh, mutations uh, most of the times occur in somatic cells and whenever mutations occur in somatic cells often they will not have any negative 
consequence. So both these statements are correct and R is correct explanation of A and that's why answer is both A and R are true and R provides correct explanation of A. Question number 15 answer is A. Next question now. Next question, 16th question. Which of the following statement regarding the biodiesel is incorrect? Right? Which of the following statement is incorrect regarding biodiesel? First or A. The purest form of the biodiesel is B100. Right? So this statement is a correct statement. Let's say it is B20. That means it consists of 20% of biodiesel and rest of the diesel will be, uh, be, uh, will be hydrocarbon or normal diesel that we have. Right, so B100 is the purest form of biodiesel. This statement is correct. B, currently biodiesel is being produced in India primarily from the palm sterine oil. Right, so palm sterine oil is the solid fraction of palm oil. Right, so uh, sterine oil means or sterine is solid fraction of palm oil. So yes, in India, most of the biodiesel that we produce is from palm sterine oil. Second statement or B is also correct. C green diesel or biodiesel are same and interchangeable this statement is an incorrect statement right biodiesel and green diesel yes they have same raw material right they are used they are produced from same raw material but the method of production in biodiesel and method method of production of green diesel are different they are not same they are different products and that's why they cannot be used interchangeably right so c is incorrect. The method of production of green diesel and biodiesel is different. Answer is C. Uh, we'll go through D option. The fuel typically contains different types of uh, fatty acid methyl esters or fatty acid ethyl esters, right? So that is a correct statement and that's why uh, these biofuels or biodiesels are called as FAME, FAME, that means fatty acid methyl ester or FA. E, e that is fatty acid fatty acid ethyl ester right so this statement is a correct statement answer of this question is question number 16 answer is c question number 16 answer is c next question now next question 17th so uh, in 17th question uh, we have uh, we are supposed to identify which pairs are correctly matched so we have diseases on one hand and their vectors on other hand. So uh, first is first disease is lymphatic filariasis. So lymphatic fil filariasis uh, is its vector given is anophilus mosquito, which is a correct vector. So the uh, disease lymphatic filariasis is the result of is the result of parasite like parasites like nematodes. So nematodes or roundworms. So lymphatic filariasis, yes, its vector is anaphylus mosquito first pair is correctly matched second west nile fever which is the result of west nile virus it is spread through or its vector is culex again mosquito so both these pairs are correctly matched with respect to disease uh, diseases and their vector now third leishmaniasis so leishmaniasis is also called as kala azar and leishmaniasis is the result of a parasite called as leishmania and this leishmania, leishmaniasis does not spread through or its vector is not lice, its vector is sandfly, right? Sandflies are the vectors of leishmaniasis and that's why third pair is incorrect. Next, uh, typhus or typhus. Typhus is a kind of fever or it is a bacterial disease and uh, it is spread through lysis. It, it spreads through lysis, so it is interchange. So leishmaniasis spreads through sandflies and uh, typhus spreads through lice. So it is interchange and that's why they are incorrect. Sec third and fourth pairs are incorrect. First two are correct. Answer is, answer is B. Only two pairs are correct. 17th answer is B. Next 18th question. Consider the following statements. First, RNAs can have both the properties of DNA and of protein as a genetic material as an enzyme right so that is a correct statement we know that uh, in viruses rnas are genetic material in other organisms like even including human beings rnas are not a genetic material they are enzymes so rnas can be both genetic material as well as enzyme first statement is correct second mutation rates of rna viruses can be up to uh, 1 million times higher than the mutation rate of their hosts that 
increases accounts for their fast evolution right so we know that uh, rna viruses because uh, you must have uh, came across various news articles in which they are saying that sars cov2 is mutating fast so uh, sars cov2 is an rna virus it does mutate fast compared to its host cell and that's why uh, we are uh, we uh, see lots of variations in uh, rna viruses so second statement related to mutation of rna which is uh, about the rate of mutation is the correct statement rate of mutation of rna viruses is higher third rna viruses can recombine and reassort with dna and rna from the host or other viral strains potentially generating a new strain right so this statement is also a correct statement when rna mutations occur they may realign themselves the genetic material of rna may re realign themselves with the genetic material of dna or rna and as a result of that we'll be able to see its variation so all these three statements regarding rna and rna viruses are correct and that's why answer is d 1 2 and 3 question number 18th answer is d right next question now 19th carbon capture and storage is sometimes referred as referred to as carbon capture utilization and storage what is the importance utilization of the uh, restored carbon dioxide by this process fine so uh, carbon capture and storage technology is also considered as is also called as carbon capture and utilization uh, storage Ca carbon capital uh, carbon capture utilization and storage technology so we are supposed to identify what are the potential applications of this carbon that we have captured and where we can use it so let us consider the options first or let us consider the statements first enhanced oil recovery from the oil wells now this is an important use of captured co2 when captured co2 is pumped in the oil wells will be able to flush out oil which is hard to explore right which is hard to uh, hard to extract so that oil will be able to extract because of the pumping of co2 that we have captured and that's why first yes it is a potential application of carbon dioxide second making useful products like cements cement carbon fibers and graphene right so all these all these materials need carbon uh, carbon compounds and there we can use carbon dioxide right so right now various scientists are experimenting with this kind of uh, these kind of products from uh, from uh, the captured carbon dioxide but at the same time uh, certain products have also been manufactured right so second statement is also a potential application of co2 third to grow algae or bacteria so that is a correct statement because algae or bacteria especially algae they need carbon dioxide right because algae also carry out the process of photosynthesis right so if algae are able to grow obviously bacteria will also be able to grow uh, because bacterial cells uh, also uh, also need carbon dioxide right so all these three statements are correct fourth making fertilizer so that is also a potential application of carbon capture uh, carbon captured through uh, ccus technology right so all these are the correct statements related to the use of use of carbon dioxide captured during carbon capture utilization and storage answer is d 1 2 3 and Four. question number 19th answer is d next question now so let me check you have okay fine next question question number uh, 20th consider the following statements so the statement uh, the question is related to brain fingerprinting so in brain fingerprinting printing it is a technique used in criminal investigations wherein uh, a, a person or individual will be will be shown certain pictures related to crime scene and as a result of those pictures his or her uh, brain will generate certain brain waves so those brain waves will be will be analyzed in order to know whether that person was there in that particular crime scene when that crime was was conducted right so that is what is brain fingerprinting fine so let us consider the statements uh, a or assertion brain fingerprinting can detect or measure lies stress and emotion so this statement is an incorrect statement because in brain fingerprinting we uh, we try to record brain's activity and on the basis of the 
recording of brain's activity wherein we are using, we are mapping brain waves, it is difficult to know whether that person is lying, whether that person uh, is under stress or the emotions of that person we won't be able to know. So that is not the, uh, not the feature of brain fingerprinting. In brain fingerprinting, we won't be able to detect major lies, stress and emotion. So A is incorrect. R. Brain fingerprinting is a scientific technique which uses brain waves from an electroencephalography. Electroencephalography means uh, mapping the brain activity to determine whether specific information is stored in the subject's cognitive memory. Right? So we just try to know the, uh, the uh, storage or the memory of that particular person. Right? And that's why we won't be able to analyze stress, uh, emotions and whether that person is lying or not. So that we won't be able to do under brain fingerprinting because we just try to uh, determine whether the specific information is stored in the brain of person or not. So R is correct, A is incorrect, answer is A, answer is D. R is true but A is false. So question number 20, answer is D. Question number 20, answer is D. Now, next question is question number 66. <clears throat> next question is question number 66. Consider the following statements regarding the nuclear fuels and centrifugation. Right? So, uh, we know that in nature, we have natural uranium. And in natural uranium, we have two isotopes. Uranium-238, whose concentration is more almost 99.7% uh, uh, and uranium-235 whose concentration is mere 0.3%, right? So, but also we know that uranium-238 is a fissile, is not a fissile material, it is a fertile material. Uranium-238 whose concentration is more in natural uranium is a fertile element. It won't be, uh, won't be able to set nuclear fission reaction, right? On the other hand, uranium-238, which is mere 0.3%, is fissile in nature. So, what we have to do? We have to increase the concentration of uranium-235, which is fissile in nature. And the process that is carried out to increase the concentration of uranium-235 is called as centrifugation, right? The process is called as centrifugation, right? So, let us consider the statements related to nuclear fuels and centrifugation first. First, theoretically, now the word is very important, theoretically. Theoretically, a minimum of 20% of uranium-235 concentration could be sufficient for uranium to be weapon usable, right? So, uh, generally it is said that in theory, uranium-235 uh, concentration, if it is increased up to, 30, uh, up to 20%, then that uranium where concentration of uranium-235 is up to 20%, that uranium becomes weapon grade uranium, right? So that is true theoretically, but in practice we need 90%, enrichment up to 90%, that means uranium 235 concentration up to 90% is needed for, uh, for using that uranium for the development of weapons. So theoretically, it is true that uranium-235 Whose, uh, or uh, uranium where uranium-235 concentration is 20% becomes weapon grade, it is correct. First is correct. Second, the enrichment process of uranium requires the material to be in a liquid form. This statement is an incorrect statement. In order to carry out centrifugation, which uh, centrifugation which uses, uh, this process uses centrifuges. So, in centrifuges, we need gaseous form of uranium, not the liquid form. Right? And that's why second statement is incorrect statement. Third, most nuclear reactors are light water reactors and require uranium to be enriched to 3 to 5 percent of uranium 235 in their fuel. Right? So, this statement is also a correct statement. In light water uh, reactors, the uranium where concentration of uranium 235 is 3 to 5 percent can be used for the production of weapons. Right? It, can be used for, uh, it can be used for the production of energy, not weapons. It can be used for the production of energy. Right? So, third statement is also 
a correct statement. First and third statements are correct. Second statement is incorrect. Answer is C, 1 and 3 only. Question number 66, answer is C. Next, 67. Which of the following can be the basis for the toxicity of nanoparticles? Right. So, nanoparticles uh, have certain challenges as well. So, what are the challenges? One of the major challenges is that challenge is that nanoparticles could be toxic in nature. Why that happens? That happens because of many reasons. We are supposed to identify those reasons. First, large surface to volume ratio. So, this statement is a correct statement. Uh, as we go down to nano size or nano scale, surface area goes on increasing. And that's why large surface to volume ratio makes nanoparticles highly reactive. And if they become reactive, they may become toxic to certain microorganisms. So, first statement is correct statement. Second, composition of any chemicals, any chemical absorbed on, on the nanoparticles surface. So, this is also a correct statement because it also depends on the chemical that is getting absorbed on the nano, uh, nanoparticle surface. If the chemical has the toxicity, obviously that uh, nanoparticle which is absorbing that material will also become toxic. Second statement is also correct. Third, the shape of the nanoparticles, right? So, shape of the nanoparticles also make them uh, make or increase their toxic uh, toxicity. Why? Because shape of nanoparticles will determine their reactivity and as a result of their reactivity, they may become toxic for certain microorganisms. So, shape determines reactivity and which makes them toxic for various uh, for microbes. So, all these three are correct statements regarding the toxicity of nanoparticles. Answer is D, 1, 2 and 3. 67 answer is D. 68 question. Which of the following statements regarding the various methods of determination of uh, various methods of age determination tests is incorrect, right? So, we are supposed to find out uh, which of the statements are incorrect with respect to methods of age determination first or A. Under the wisdom teeth technique, doctors examine the third molar which usually erupts before 16 years of age. Now, this statement is an incorrect statement. Yes, molar tooths, molar teeth are or not uh, uh, molar teeth, wisdom teeth is used to identify, is used to determine age of of a person and this is generally used in USA. But wisdom teeth, wisdom teeth generally erupts after 17 years of age up to 25. So, in order to determine age between 17 to 25, this wisdom teeth method is used. So, A is incorrect statement and that is our answer. 68th answer is A, but we will go through other methods as well. Uh, B, in ossification test, methods for age, uh, age determination, human bones, bones are used, right? So, this is correct statement. Ossification is the method wherein human bones are used because uh, there is a process called as ossification wherein the uh, bone develops certain new material and on the basis of that new material developed on the bone will be able to identify age of a person. B is correct. C, is C, ossification test only tells the estimated age of a person and not the exact age. So, that is the problem with ossification test wherein we will be able to know only the estimated age, not the exact age. C is correct. D, uh, epigenetic clock measures DNA uh, methyl methylation methylation levels to estimate age of a tissue or an organ. Now, this statement is also a correct statement uh, because in epigenetic clocks, we uh, try to measure DNA methylation, which is a kind of chemical reaction in which, uh, in which a small molecule, uh, small molecule of methyl group gets added to DNA, right? So, what is DNA methylation? It is a process in which a small molecule of methyl group will be added to DNA. And on that basis, we will be able to know the age of that person, right? So, it is called as epigenetic clock uh, technique, which uses or which measures DNA methylation levels, which is a kind of chemical reaction, right? So, D is also correct. So, incorrect statement is A and that's why it is our answer. 68th answer is A. 68th answer is A. Now, next, 69th. Which of the following is the correct meaning of the term doxing? Right, so, doxing is a, uh, is a method wherein identity, personal information of a person will be shared on the internet in order to 
uh, in order to take some uh, some il uh, some illicit advantage right so statement number statement number b is correct right doxing means it is the intentional revelation of a person's private information online without their consent often with malicious intent right correct answer is b 69th answer is b next last question from science and tech which of the following statements is are the risks of xenotransplantation right xenotransplantation uh, was in news because of the transplantation of pig's heart in human body so uh, xenotransplantation uh, includes transplantation of cells tissues of cells tissues or organs of non human that means animals into the human body right so let us consider the statements first transplants from animals have a higher risk of rejection because animals have a different genetic code right so obviously genetic code of animals is different than human beings and that's why the rejection rate of xenotransplantation is very high first statement is correct second the organ to be to be transplanted may contain animal specific germs right so that is also a correct statement there are certain germs which only attack animals so they the organs that we the, that we are using in xenotransplantation may have certain organ specific germs which are only related to animals so uh, animal specific germs will be there second is also correct third the health concerns may be latent and lead to disease years after infection right so uh, because the person may be using certain medicines when xenotransplantation has carried out the uh, the health concerns related to xenotransplantation may not be seen in the early stage and that's why the person who got uh, pig's heart died after almost 3 months right so that is also a correct statement health concerns may be later and they uh, they may start showing their symptoms later on so all these three statements related to xenotransplantation are correct answer is d 1 2 and 3 question number 70 answer is d now let me check whether you have any doubts fine so let us move to the next question uh, now we will be discussing about questions from uh, questions from science and technology questions from environment so questions of environment are from 20th question Thirty one, sorry, thirty one. So thirty one. First question is first question from environment. Which of the following statements is are correct regarding e waste management in India? Right. So uh, recently there was one report given by Ministry of Electronics and IT. On that basis, this question has been framed. First question or first statement. In India, Mumbai ranks. First in generating e-waste followed by Delhi and Bangalore. Correct statement it is. Mumbai has highest uh, or it generates highest amount of electronic waste in India as per the report given by Ministry of Electronics and IT. First statement is correct. Second, more than 90% of the e-waste in India is recycled in formal sector whereas only 5% of the e-waste volume are handled in the non-formal units. Right, so this statement is an incorrect statement. It is reverse. Only five percent is handled by formal sector. That means only five percent percent of electronic waste that we are generating is uh, is uh, handled in a scientific manner. Rest of the ninety five percent is handled by informal sector, wherein uh, non scientific or unscientific practices will be used for extracting precious metals from electronic waste. Right. So they may use beating, they may use concentrated hydrochloric acid, concentrated acids are used to extract uh, the metals, precious metals used in electronic waste. So second statement is incorrect. First is correct. Answer is A, one only. 31, answer is A. 32. Consider the following statements regarding new notification of on brick kilns. So brick kilns uh, have means uh, there is a new notification related to brick kilns uh, given by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change in 2022. And as per that, certain recommendations are given for reducing pollution from brick kilns. First statement: existing brick kilns 
shall be converted to uh, shall be converted to either zigzag technology or vertical shaft so this statement is a correct statement uh, the notification says that existing clins should move towards either zigzag method wherein there is recirculation of uh, of the gases and that uh, makes the process of heating more efficient right in zigzag technology there is certain arrangement of bricks that allows the recirculation of the gases generated inside those brick kilns which uh, enhances the utility of those gases so that is what is brick uh, zigzag technology and vertical shaft method or vertical shaft uh, technology used in brick kilns is developed in uh, or it was developed in china wherein uh, and this method is considered as environment friendly method it is efficient than the traditional methods used in india and that's why the existing uh, methods of brick kilns are being asked to move towards either zigzag or vertical shaft first statement is correct second or brick kil all brick kilns uh, kilns shall use approved fuels fuel such as png pipe natural gas coal firewood and or agricultural residue right so that is allowed under the new notification the uh, brick kilns should or shall use png coal fire firewood or agricultural residue second statement is correct third the use of peat coke tires and plastics are allowed in brick kilns so is it logical will they allow uh, peat coke peat coke is a kind of residual uh, that we get or it is a by product of oil refining so will it be allowed tires or plastic will we allow allow these kind of uh, by products uh, or products to be used in brick kilns obviously no because they are more polluting and that's why third statement is not logical you can remove it answer is 1 and 2 only answer is a 1 and 2 only 32 answer is a next now 33 with reference to carbon trading market consider the following statements right so uh, because of the recently uh, recently amended energy uh, energy conservation act this particular question is being asked so what are carbon markets or carbon trading markets in carbon trading markets uh, carbon emission reduction is made an asset or it is made a tradable asset right so let us consider the statements first united nations kyoto protocol on climate change marks the formal beginning of carbon trading in 1997 this statement is a correct statement because there are certain flexibilities given under kyoto protocol which allows establishment of carbon trading market first statement is correct second one carbon credit is equal to one metric ton of carbon dioxide this statement is also a correct statement one carbon credit achieved by a particular uh, industry will be equivalent to one ton of co2 reduction right one metric ton of co2 uh, reduction so second statement is also a correct statement both these statements are correct answer is c both 1 and 2 33 answer is c 34 consider the following statements regarding panama ram heronry right so panama ram heronry is there in in the state of kerala and it is a kind of uh, a site which is used by uh, herons right it is a breeding colony of herons right and generally it consists of multiple trees let us consider the statements first the heronry is formed on the panama ram river which is a tributary of kabini river which itself is a river of kaveri uh, tributary of kaveri first is correct statement second this is the only site in kerala where cattle egret breeds so cattle egret is also uh, a bird species and it carries out its breeding in this panama ram uh, heronry second statement is also a correct statement both these statements are correct this is a quite uh, this is a uh, informative question you should be aware of these kind of current affairs current affair topics answer is c both 1 and 2 34 answer is c now again a uh, current affairs uh, based question which is again informative or factual question so there are uh, two new species found one in uh, tamil nadu and other in arunachal pradesh so we we are supposed to identify these species that is mono mono cero ceromia flavos cutata and mono ceromia nigra they are the species related to which of the following so they are flowering insects right or flower flies they are flower flies answer is b 35 answer is b factual question you should be aware of the uh, information Sec, uh, 
consider the following statements regarding reserve forest right so now there are three types of forests that are mandated under uh, indian forest act 1937 reserve forest protected forest and third is village forest right so uh, let us consider the statement so reserve forests are created under 1927 act indian forest act first statement reserve forests are the most restricted forest and there is no role of state governments in their constitution right so part of the statement is correct part of uh, the statement is incorrect so first part is correct reserve forests are the most restricted forest this is correct because uh, out of three forest created under indian forest act 1927 reserve forest have stricter protection followed by protected forest and then village forest so uh, this part is correct but uh, they the, these are created by the state governments and that's why there the uh, part which says that there is no role of state government in their constitution is incorrect and that's why entire statement is incorrect first statement is incorrect second in reserve forest Uh, local people are prohibited to carry out certain activities right so as they are uh, they have highest protection most restricted forest obviously local people won't be allowed to carry out certain activities second statement is correct third behali reserve forest is located on assam arunachal pradesh border it is there in assam but it is near uh, arunachal pradesh border so third statement is also correct statement so second and third are correct but we are supposed to identify incorrect statement first is incorrect answer is a one only 36 answer is a again uh, it is bit knowledge based question and a bit of uh, factual uh, bit of facts right so behali reserve forest you should be aware of its location fine next question now so 36 answer is a one only next next is 37 which of the following factors influence the uh, decomposition so rate of decomposition is enhanced or it is influenced by various factors first is uh, litter quality right so litter quality obviously it is a raw material for decomposition and that's why it should be a factor that will determine the rate of decomposition so if litter consists of more lignine or chitin the rate of decomposition will slow down because of the complex a uh, complex nature of bonding in these uh, in these molecules like lignine and chitin which are present in the litter right so which may be present in the litter first is correct litter quality obviously have its influence on decomposition second temperature so temperature also has its rate has its influence on uh, on the decomposition process because uh, because bacteria also function in a certain temperature range or microorganisms which are carrying out decomposition they also function in certain temperature range if they get that temperature they'll be able to grow faster and thus decomposition will be faster second is correct third aeration obviously there is need of oxygen because um, decomposers are also living organisms and that's why they need ox uh, oxygen for their respiration so if there is proper aeration obviously uh, decomposition rate will be influenced soil ph value also uh, is a factor which will determine the rate of decomposition inorganic chemicals so this is also correct because inorganic chemicals like let's say uh, potassium calcium so these are the nutrients which are used by uh, microorganisms or decomposers to grow so if uh, these inorganic nutrients inorganic chemicals are available in their uh, in the soil where decomposition process is being carried out the rate will improve so inorganic chemicals also have the influence and last is moisture so moisture warm and wet conditions will increase the rate of decomposition cold and dry condition will reduce the rate of decomposition right so these are the factors answer is 1 2 3 4 5 6 mentioned in option d question number 37 answer is d next now 38 uh, so this question is bit simple question which of the following statements is are correct about population interaction so there are various interactions that we know amensalism commensalism competition Uh, parasitism predation etc etc so question is on that first intra species competition improves the species adaptation this statement is a correct statement why because intra species competition is a competition amongst individuals of same species and if there is intra species competition obviously the uh, the individuals amongst that particular species will adapt to the to the intra species competition which are more fierce and that's why 
इंट्रा स्पीशीज कॉम्पिटिशन इम्प्रूव द रेट ऑफ और इम्प्रूव द टाइप ऑफ अडेप्टेशन एग्जिबिटेड बाई स्पीशीज फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट सेकेंड इंटर स्पीशीज कॉम्पिटिशन मे लीड टू वन स्पीशीज गोइंग एक्सटिंग और अदर बिकमिंग मोर स्पेशलाइज राइट सो और बोथ बिकमिंग मोर स्पेशलाइज राइट सो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज ए करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इंटर स्पीशीज कॉम्पिटिशन इज अमंगस्ट इंडिविजुअल्स बिलोंगिंग टू डिफरेंट स्पीशीज एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉम्पिटिशन विच इज इंटर स्पीशीज कॉम्पिटिशन वन स्पीशीज मे बी मे ओवर पावर अदर स्पीशीज और दे बोथ बिकम स्पेशलाइज सो दैट देल बी एबल टू अवॉइड कॉम्पिटिशन राइट सो इंटर स्पीशीज कॉम्पिटिशन लीड्स टू एक्सटिंक्शन ऑफ वन और बोथ स्पीशीज बिकम स्पेशलाइज सो सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इज ऑल्सो ए करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट थर्ड एमेंसिलिज्म इज अ टाइप ऑफ पॉपुलेशन इंटरेक्शन वेयर वन पॉपुलेशन इज हार्म बट दी अदर पॉपुलेशन इज अनफेक्टेड दिस इज ऑल्सो ए करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इन अमेंसिलिज्म वन पॉपुलेशन दैट मीन्स वन स्पीशीज इज हार्म अदर स्पीशीज रिमेन्स अनफेक्टेड करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट सो ऑल दीज थ्री स्टेटमेंट्स आर करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग अमेंसिलिज्म एंसर इज एंसर इज डी वन टू एन थ्री क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी एट एंसर इज डी next now 39 which of the following statements is incorrect regarding ramsar sites and wetland ecosystem right so ramsar sites uh, or ramsar convention we know it is for the conservation of wetlands ecosystem let us consider the statements a the uh, coburg peninsula in australia was the first designated ramsar site so again this is information based question first a is correct b kerala has maximum number of ramsar sites followed by uttar pradesh incorrect it is tamil nadu with 1414 uh, ramsar sites in india followed by uttar pradesh with 10 ramsar sites so we are supposed to find out incorrect statement b is incorrect and that is our answer right other statements are factual statements you can go through the go through those statements and you can use that information uh, to upgrade your notes so answer is b 39 answer is b 40th question consider the following statements about the coral reef structure right so we know that there are three prime types three important types of coral reefs uh, fringing reefs barrier reef and atolls so question is on those different coral reef structure first fringing reefs are found offshore on the continental shelf and usually run parallel to the coastline so this statement is not correct regarding fringing reefs fringing reefs are closer to the uh, closer, closer to the coast and that's why as they are closer to the coast they do not lead to formation of a uh, of a lagoon lake often fringing reefs do not form lagoon lake or even if it is formed it will be shallow it will not be too deep it will be shallow so fringing reefs uh, first statement related to fringing reefs is incorrect second barrier reefs evolve and develop near the continent and remain close to the coastline so this is correct regarding fringing reef and first statement is correct regarding barrier reef barrier reefs are found offshore on the continental shore, shore and they uh, on on the continental shelf and they run parallel to the uh, uh, to the coastline right so it is the statement of barrier reef so the uh, statements are interchanged first two are incorrect third atolls are formed on mid, uh, mid oceanic ridges and are shaped circularly uh, circularly or elliptically right so that is a correct statement we know that the, if we if we get a top view of uh, of atolls we find them cir circular in nature or elliptical in nature and often they are found formed on mid oceanic ridges so only third statement is correct first two are incorrect answer is c three only question number 40 answer is c question number 40 answer is c now the next question is 76 next question is 76 next question 76 consider the following statements first due to the consideration of biological stocks as resource it is the primary reason for the deterioration of biodiversity this statement is a correct statement because when we consider uh, biological resources as reservoir of uh, of the uh, resources that we need for various purposes let's say in industries or agriculture 
that leads to exploitation of those biological resources which in turn harms biodiversity right so when we consider biological resources uh, when we consider biological stocks as a resource that leads to exploitation of those resources leading to their harm first statement is correct second the diverse uh, the diverse and ecosystem lesser are the chances for the species to survive through adversities and attacks due to increased competition right so if the ecosystem is diverse there will be higher chances that species will be able to survive through adversities because there may be certain unfavorable host for the uh, for the viruses and if those viruses go in the body of unfavorable host they won't be able to attack they won't be able to affect that unfavorable host and that's why those uh, species which may be vulnerable to that virus will be protected and that's why second statement is incorrect the diverse and ecosystem more or higher will be the chances of survival second statement is incorrect statement 76 second statement is incorrect third biodiversity helps in understanding functions and evolution of the role of each species in sustaining ecosystems right so that is a correct statement when we uh, when we carry out the study of biodiversity at different levels be it genetic level species level or ecosystem level will be able to get understanding of the functions and also the evolutionary pattern of different species third statement is correct so answer is 1 and 3 because second statement is incorrect uh, answer is d 1 and 3 only 76 answer is d now uh, 77th question again this is a bit factual question informative question uh, there are different species given and we are supposed to identify uh, which of these are invasive alien species found in India, right? So all these are invasive alien species found in India and they have been introduced in India from different parts of the world, right? So answer of this question is uh, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Now for this particular question, you may get, uh, you may come across various uh, different information like let's say uh, Acacia farnesia, farnesiana is the uh, invasive species in India. In certain other sources, you, uh, you, might, you might see that it is not considered as invasive species, right? So uh, there is, uh, this question may become slightly debatable, but we'll go with answer D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. 77, answer is D. Next, 78, consider the following sources. Which of the above given are the sources of air pollution? So first is aerosol deodorants. We know that aerosol deodorants consist of volatile organic compounds and that's why they are a source of air pollution. First is correct. Second, naturally occurring radon gas. So radon gas which is emitted from the uh, radioactivity of radium and this, this radioactivity is the natural radioactivity shown by radium leads to emission of radon gas which is an indoor air pollutant. Second is also correct. Third. Paddy cultivation, paddy cultivation obviously leads to emission of methane, which is a kind of pollutant. So third is also correct. Fourth, vacuum cleaners. So vacuum cleaners also leads to uh, production of, or also leads to particulate matter pollution, right? Yes, vacuum cleaners also lead to particulate, uh, particulate matter pollution because these vacuum cleaners unsettle particulate matters. And as they are unsettled, they will they will be uh, suspended in, they will remain suspended in air and thus they may act as air pollution, air pollutant. So all these are the sources of air pollution. Answer is D, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Next now, last question from, uh, from environment. Which of the following statements is are correct about bioremediation? So bioremediation is a branch of biotechnology wherein we culture microbes and those cultured microbes will be allowed to enter in the polluted sites wherein pollutants will be used as a source of energy or food by those microbes and those will be able to take care of that polluted site. So that is what is bioremediation. Let us consider the statement first. Bioremediation is a biotechnical process of waste management which involves the use of organisms to remove the pollutants from a polluted area. So that is the definition of bioremediation. First statement is correct. Second, the process of bio 
augmentation in the process of bio augmentation it becomes impossible to control the growth of microorganisms in the process of removing the particular contaminant right so in bio augmentation what we do we uh, increase the number of microorganism in a particular area so that they will be able to feed on pollutants but sometimes it may become uncontrolled or it may go out of control and that's why second statement is also a correct statement third intrinsic bioremediation is mostly used in underground places like underground petroleum tanks right so this statement is also a correct statement for intrinsic bioremediation uh, we uh, or it is the process of bioremediation preferred for underground uh, places like underground petroleum tanks where we'll be able to introduce uh, bacteria we'll be able to introduce microbes so that they can feed on those those uh, petroleum products right so this statement is also a correct statement so all these three statements correct are correct regarding bioremediation answer is d 1 2 and 3 question number question number 79 answer is answer is d 1 2 and 3 so 79th answer is d so that is about science and technology and environment questions now uh, virat sir will discuss questions from polity so thank you all the best thank you hello 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 everyone nice to be back here so i'll be discussing with you questions from <clears throat> polity and international relations that is polit uh, questions related to international organizations let us start with the first question question number 21 i hope you all you all have enjoyed giving this particular test and i really appreciate your effort giving such type of test is essential as it gives you exam uh stimulation which is very important and second thing this will also give you an idea of where you stand when you are performing in a test that that comprises of large number of candidates throughout india theek hai isliye ye test important hai jin logon ne ye test nahi diya hai those of you who have not attempted this particular test please do register yourself for second and third second and third test all right registration link will be provided in the description i want you all and i would like to you know see you all in that particular test i myself had attended the test center today and i was very pleased to see the way in which aspirants were attempting their test theek hai jis tarah se jis dedication se aap log wo test attempt kar rahe the pehle to main use bahut appreciate karta hu chalo let us move on now let us go through the questions first question that uh, first question of polity question number 21 consider the following statements consider the following statements I'm so sorry okay consider the following statements ye wala na okay consider the following statements regarding chakma and hajon communities chakma and chakma are predominantly hindus and hajon have buddhist religion uh, religious affiliation this particular statement is incorrect ठीक है, बिकॉज होजोन आर हिंदू ऑल राइट एंड चकमास आर बुद्धिस्ट ऑल राइट सो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट बोथ दिस कम्युनिटीज हैव बीन ग्रांटेड स्टेटस ऑफ सिटीजनशिप यस बोथ द कम्युनिटीज हैव बीन ग्रांटेड द स्टेटस ऑफ स्टेटस ऑफ सिटीजनशिप इनफैक्ट इंडियन बांग्लादेश हैड एन एग्रीमेंट अंडर विच इंडिया हैड प्रोमिस दैट सिटीजनशिप विल बी गिवन टू दिस टू कम्युनिटीज थर्ड स्टेटमेंट दिस कम्युनिटीज आर मोस्टली सेटल्ड इन अरुणाचल प्रदेश दिस स्टेटमेंट is correct so first statement is incorrect 2 and 3 are correct our answer therefore is b our answer therefore is b 2 and 3 moving on now moving on to question number 22 what does question number 22 state question number 22 which of the following committees have been associated with criminal law reforms in india malimart committee yes 
माधव मेमन कमिटी यस राजबीर कमिटी यस ऑल दिस थ्री कमिटी इनफैक्ट वेर एसोसिएटेड विथ क्रिमिनल क्रिमिनल लॉ रिफॉर्म्स इन इंडिया मालीमाट कमिटी मालीमाट कमिटी वॉज फॉर्म इन द इयर टू थाउजेंड ऑल राइट माधव मेमन कमिटी वॉज एस्टेब्लिश फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ ड्राफ्टिंग नैशनल पॉलिसी ऑन क्रिमिनल जस्टिस एंड राज राज सिंह कमिटी इट वॉज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड बाय यूनियन होम मिनिस्ट्री इन टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी सो ऑल दिस थ्री कमिटीज आर एसोसिएटेड विथ क्रिमिनल लॉ कमिटी क्रिमिनल लॉ रिफॉर्म्स इनफैक्ट दिस हैज बीन इन न्यूज बिकॉज ऑफ राजवीर सिंह कमिटी राजवीर सिंह कमिटी एज इट हैज बीन एस्टेब्लिश वेरी रिसेंटली सो वॉट हैज एपेंड इज इट हैज बीन इन न्यूज ओवर द पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दैट मलिमाट कमिटी एंड माधव मेमन कमिटी वेर ऑल्सो टेकन इन रेफरेंस ऑल राइट देर एसोसिए देर रेफरेंस वॉज ऑलवेज गिवन इन न्यूज सो वॉट डू वी सी इज ऑल द थ्री आर करेक्ट एंड आवर आंसर देर फोर इज दी मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री देखते हैं विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग हैव नॉट बीन पार्ट ऑफ सिलेक्शन कमिटी फॉर अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ लोकपाल ऑल राइट सो फर्स्ट इज स्पीकर ऑप्शन ए इज स्पीकर ऑफ लोकसभा स्पीकर ऑफ लोकसभा इज पार्ट ठीक है स्पीकर ऑफ लोकसभा इज पार्ट ऑफ द सिलेक्शन कमिटी सेकेंड ऑप्शन इज एमिनेंट जूरिस्ट यस एंड एमिनेंट जूरिस्ट इज ऑल्सो पार्ट ऑफ इट थर्ड चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया यस डी अटोर्नी जनरल अटोर्नी जनरल इज एक्चुअली नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द कमिटी फॉर सिलेक्शन ऑफ लोकपाल ऑल राइट सो डी ऑप्शन इज रॉन्ग क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑप्शन डी इज रॉन्ग मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर देख लेते हैं कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग समन सिंह ऑफ स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर ऑल राइट द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज गवर्नर समन सिज द लेजिस्लेचर एक्टिंग ऑन एड एंड एडवाइस ऑफ द कैबिनेट ऑफकोर्स ही डज ऑफकोर्स द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज राइट फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज राइट first statement is correct all right second statement governor can use his her discretionary power while summoning the state legislature not at all not at all all right second statement is wrong second statement is incorrect first statement is correct our answer therefore is a all right our answer therefore is a moving on now to question number 25 question number 25 okay so now we have question on democracy report 2022 such questions have been asked by upsc and it is remember it is important to remember dekho aise questions aaye na to what you have to remember first and foremost report ka author which institute is the author of the report which institute has drafted the report second thing that you have to remember is ki which <coughs> which objectives were meant to be achieved by this report where what were the parameters On the basis of which the report has come to a conclusion. तो वो हमें याद रखना है ठीक है And third thing, India's positioning. You have to remember India's positioning and what is the position of India with respect to its neighbors. वो हमें याद रखना है तो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट डेमोक्रेसी रिपोर्ट टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी टू ठीक है नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू विच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैड रिलीज इट तो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज वी डेम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ स्वीडन ऑप्शन बी इज द राइट ऑप्शन ओवर हियर All right, 26 की तरफ चलते हैं मूविंग ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 26। कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग सील्ड कवर जुरिस्डिक्शन फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज ओरिजिन ऑफ सील्ड कवर जुरिस्टूडेंट कैन बी ट्रैक्ट बैक टू सिक्योरिटी एंड इंटेलिजेंस मैटर्स सिक्योरिटी एंड इंटेलिजेंस रिलेटेड मैटर दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इनकरेक्ट एक्चुअली ठीक है इट वॉज मोर रिलेटेड टू एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव रीजन All right. When for the first time, when Supreme Court ne sealed cover jurisdiction shuru kiya, the thing was that ki it would have brought bad name even to those people who were not involved in something something wrong. So the pahela bar, the first time when Supreme Court got involved in sealed cover jurisdiction. What is sealed cover jurisdiction? Basically, sealed cover jurisdiction is basically sealed cover jurisdiction is when supreme court wants some information but it does not want the information to go public there might be various reasons for it for the first instance when sealed cover jurisdiction came into play what happened was supreme court had sought report on administrative corruption now the report did not finalize the names of those people who had definitely committed corruption theek hai to jab sealed cover mein aaya tha it was only a reference 
तो अगर वो बातें बाहर निकल जाती वो नाम बाहर निकल जाते तो दोज पीपल हुए नॉट एक्चुअली इन्वॉल्व इन करप्शन उनका नाम खराब हो जाता ठीक है दैट इज वाई फॉर एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव रीजन वॉट वी वॉट वी सो इज सुप्रीम कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट अलाउड फील्ड कवर जुडिस्टिक्शन टू कम इन इंडिया सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट तो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट सिल्ड कवर जुडिस्टिक्शन डिराइव इज लेजिटिमेसी फ्रॉम सुप्रीम कोर्ट रूल्स ऑब्वियसली सुप्रीम कोर्ट कैन फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट कैन फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग जस्टिस यूज इट्स रूल यूज इट्स डिस्क्रिप्शन इवन दो इवन दो समथिंग इज नॉट रिटर्न इन द स्टैट्यूट ठीक है Until and unless Supreme Court does not go against the law of the land, which it which it does not, or against the Constitution, which it does not, so what happens is Supreme Court has the room to, you know, make rules, make rules, or use its rules to get into something that is innovative and something that will deliver justice. So first statement wrong. Is second say? Yeah, our answer is B. Only two. B only two is the right answer. 27 की तरफ चलते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर 27 कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग एट शेड्यूल ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अच्छा एट शेड्यूल ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन में क्या है लैंग्वेजेस है ऑलराइट एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम कितनी है 22 लैंग्वेजेस है चलो द प्रोसेस फॉर इंक्लूजन ऑफ एनी लैंग्वेज इन एट शेड्यूल इज कोडिफाइड बाय मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ होम अफेयर नॉट एट ऑल प्रोसेस इज नॉट कोडिफाइड ऑलराइट प्रोसेस कोडिफाइड नहीं है तो पहला स्टेटमेंट गलत हो गया The original constitution did not contain any scheduled languages. It did. All right. Eight schedule was always part of Indian constitution, and in fact, in the beginning there were fourteen languages. Now there are twenty-four, but in the beginning there were fourteen languages. So second statement, jo hai, that is wrong. First statement is also wrong. Our answer is neither one is correct nor two is correct. Okay. Moving on now to question number twenty-eight. Eighty-eighth question. Pe chalte. President holds. Consider the following statements. President holds quasi-judicial power in presidential system. Yes, he does. ठीक है जैसे हमारे president के पास pardoning power है, जैसे हमारे president के पास you know respite का power है. उसी तरह से same powers are with American president. American president also has pardoning power, so it is part of his quasi-judicial authority. Second statement देखते हैं. Among Quad countries except USA, all countries follow parliamentary system. Yes, Australia. इंडिया एंड जापान चार मेंबर है ना कॉर्ड में ये तीन कंट्रीज प्लस यूएस यूएस ऑस्ट्रेलिया इंडिया जापान इसमें से एक ही है प्रेसिडेंशियल दैट इज यूएस बाकी थ्री आर पार्लियामेंट्री सिस्टम तो वी सी फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड स्टेटमेंट टू बी बोथ राइट हेंस अवर आंसर विल बी हेंस अवर आंसर विल बी जस्ट अ मिनट सॉरी सी और आंसर विल बी सी बोथ वन एंड टू ट्वेंटी देख लेते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ लेटेस्ट सी कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग सोर्स ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सोर्सेस ऑफ इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन प्लीज रिमेंबर फ्रॉम वेयर विच प्रोविजन वी हैव टेकन वॉट एवर स्टैंडर्ड बुक्स यू रेफर टू ना उसमें ये लिखा हुआ रहेगा ठीक है देख लेना क्वेश्चन आता है इसमें से इसलिए इतना एम्फोसाइज करके बोल रहा हूं क्वेश्चन आता है इस पर The concept of procedure established by law was borrowed from Japanese constitution. Absolutely, यहाँ पे बहुत बच्चे mistake करते हैं, ठीक है? Many students do commit mistake over here. It is Japanese constitution जहाँ से हमने लिया procedure established by law. Remember this: freedom of trade and commerce within the country is taken from Australia. Yes, it is. Our federal structure ना, it imitates Australian and Canadian structure, ठीक है? Australian and Canadian federal structure. So trade and commerce to be taken Trade and commerce to be done in any part of the country is taken from Australian Constitution. दोनों सही है. They are asking us for incorrect. देखो भाई, ये है ना? इसे जरा ध्यान से देखना. ठीक है? Take this particular word very seriously. Incorrect. What happens is in the urge of marking the answer, क्या होता है ना? We jump to it and we mark something that is not correct. वो नहीं होना चाहिए आप लोगों के साथ. बहुत से बच्चों का एक एक मार्क्स के वजह से या दो मार्क्स के वजह से जो रह जाता है ना प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ दिस इविल वर्ड इनकरेक्ट तो इसे ध्यान से देखना है और आंसर इज डी इनकरेक्ट पूछा है ना बोथ आर करेक्ट ना इधर इज इनकरेक्ट तो डी इज द राइट आंसर चलो आगे बढ़ते थर्टी की तरफ बढ़ते क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट नो स्टेट हैज द राइट टू विद्रॉ फ्रॉम द इंडियन यूनियन एब्सोल्यूटली करेक्ट 
no state has the right to withdraw from indian union why because in india union was not product of any agreement between the provinces india is different kind of federation in india the country was established first and then federation came into being uh, and then states came into being for various reason administrative reasons theek hai local power sharing reasons bahut se reasons hai usme lekin country pehle bana fir states bane kyunki country pehle bana and fir states bane states do not have any power to come out of the union all right second statement union territories are included in phrase union of india under article 1 absolutely not article 1 involves states dekho there are two concepts one is union of union of india which involves states which includes states and then there is territory of india and territory of india states bhi hai union territories bhi hai aur aisi bhi koi zameen hai jo india ne dusre country se li hai all of them are included in territory of india to understand the difference between these two concepts to pehla सही है दूसरा स्टेटमेंट रॉन्ग है अवर आंसर फॉर थर्टी इज देर फोर एवर आंसर फॉर थर्टी इज देर फोर ए चलो मूविंग ऑन नाउ ओके आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर एसोसिएटेड वॉज विद अस थ्रू अवर टेलीग्राम चैनल इफ यू पीपल फील दैट यू हैव एनी प्रॉब्लम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू योर स्टडीज यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट विथ contact us through our telegram channel you can ask your doubts you can also share your concerns we will definitely reply to you padhai of each and every one of you is our responsibility theek hai and we take our responsibilities very seriously chalo aage badhte hain question number 31 ki taraf aate hain question number 31 dekh lete hain bhai which of the following statements is are correct regarding e waste management in india in india mumbai ranks first in india mumbai ranks first okay this is the question sorry 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 this is a question of environment my very good friend and senior faculty rajwardhan sir must have already discussed it we will now go to question number 71 71 pe chalte hain so i am migrating from 29 to 71 directly because of you people dekho itna migration mujhe kara rahe ho aap log तो पढ़ाई करो मेरे से इतनी मेहनत करवा रहे हो तो आई वॉन्ट ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू टू राइट मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन एंड आई वॉन्ट टू गाइड ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू फॉर योर मेन्स एग्जामिनेशन साथ में मेन्स लिखेंगे मतलब मैं तो नहीं लिख पाऊंगा बट इफ यू राइट मेन्स आई विल कंसिडर आई एम राइटिंग माई मीन्स और राइट और फिर साथ में इंटरव्यू की भी प्रिपेरेशन करनी है कोई भी बच्चा जो इस टेस्ट में इन्वॉल्व है जो हमारे साथ इन्वॉल्व है टेलीग्राम पे नहीं रुकेगा प्रिलियम्स पे ठीक है मेंस लिख के रहेगा 71 लेट अस सी क्वेश्चन नंबर 71 कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग रिट्स ऑल टीयर्स ऑफ इंडियन जुडिशियल सिस्टम कैन इश्यू रिट्स दिस स्टेटमेंट इज इनकरेक्ट बिकॉज बेसिकली इट इज हाई कोर्ट अंडर आर्टिकल 226 टू सिक्स हाई कोर्ट अंडर आर्टिकल टू टू सिक्स एंड सुप्रीम कोर्ट अंडर आर्टिकल थर्टी टू दैट कैन रिश्यू दैट कैन इश्यू रिट्स सुप्रीम कोर्ट एंड हाईकोर्ट आर कॉल्ड कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल कोर्ट ठीक है चलो आगे बढ़ते हैं लेट अस मूव हेड All writs can be called as orders, but all orders cannot be called as writs. बिल्कुल सही है ठीक है बिल्कुल सही स्टेटमेंट है Writs are types of orders. They are not, you know, they are both not completely similar. Writs are sub part or set of the whole that is order. Orders, orders may be, you know, orders may be something that are other than writs also. The difference between the two. because we are just you know discussing answers to so difference between the two if you want to know contact me on telegram we will have a discussion over this theek okay? hai i will uh, i will share the definitions of both with you and i will tell you how they are different from each other but read jo hota hai na order ka ek sub title uh, sub type hai all right orders ka zone ya horizon read se zyada bada hai all right chalo koi doubt hai to pucho yaar koi interaction nahi hai bore ho jaunga main all right yahan pe Why do we conduct this? You know, uh, why do we conduct this session in the live live format? So that you can talk with us, right? So that you interact with us, ask us questions. We should not bore you. Okay. Statement three. Yeah. Then I am teaching you very badly. Say it. If you say it, if I am teaching you badly, then all right. Look, live interaction is a benefit for us. Take advantage of it. 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 Take advantage of
ट्वेंटी एट मे को यू हैव टू क्लियर यूर प्रिलियम्स दैट शुड बी ओनली गोल ऑफ यूर्स स्टेटमेंट थ्री द रिट ऑफ यूबीएस कॉर्पस इज इश्यूड बाय द कोर्ट इन दो केसेस वेर अ पर्सन इज इलीगली रिटेन अफकोर्स दैट इज द रीजन वाई यूबीएस कॉर्पस वॉज इन द फर्स्ट प्लेस अच्छा टेलीग्राम लिंक दीपांकर सिंह टेलीग्राम लिंक विल बी प्रोवाइडेड टू अस प्रोवाइडेड टू यू नॉट अस प्रोवाइडेड टू यू अदरवाइज वॉट यू डू इज ऑन टेलीग्राम सर्च प्रिलियम संपूर्ण जी एस कोर प्रिलियम संपूर्ण आपको मिल जाएगा एट यू नो ज्वाइन टू इट अगर फिर भी नहीं मिलता कॉन्टेक्ट जी एस कोर वी विल इंक्लूड यू वी विल इंक्लूड यू डोंट वरी ओके तो हम लोग ने क्या देखा फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट गलत है सेकेंड एंड थर्ड आर करेक्ट अवर आंसर देर फोर इज बी और आंसर देर फोर इज बी टू एंड थ्री चलो आगे बढ़ते क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी टू रिमेंबर ईच एंड एवरी वन ऑफ यू हैज टू राइट मीन्स दिस ईयर ठीक है एवरी वन हैज टू राइट मीन्स दिस ईयर सेवेंटी टू देखते हैं कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट फंडामेंटल राइट एंड डायरेक्टिव प्रिंसिपल ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी आर बोट कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री एंड सप्लीमेंट्री टू इच अदर एब्सोल्यूटली सुप्रीम कोर्ट हैज सेड इन केशवानंद भारती केस बोथ आर नॉट अपोजिंग इच अदर दोनों एक दूसरे को कॉम्प्लीमेंट कर रहे हैं एंड बोथ आर फॉर द वेलफेयर ऑफ सिटीजन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर कंट्री क्वेश्चन नंबर सर क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी फोर देखता हूं दीपांशु आई विल कम बैक टू क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी फोर डोंट वरी ठीक है देख लेते हैं तो स्टेटमेंट वन हो गया सेवेंटी टू का स्टेटमेंट टू देखते हैं फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज कैन बी यूज टू टेस्ट रीजनेबलनेस ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर रजिस्ट्रेशन यस सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने बोला है कि अगर इफ एनी पर्टिकुलर लॉ इज ब्रॉड फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ इंप्लीमेंटिंग फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज है ना सॉरी मैंने फंडामेंटल राइट बोला इट इज फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज फंडामेंटल ड्यूटीज को इंप्लीमेंट करने के लिए अगर कोई लॉ लाया जाता है या फिर कोई लॉ लाया जाता है जिसके बेसिस पे फंडामेंटल राइट कैन बी एनफोर्स तो देन इट इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी रीजनेबल And the validity of that law can be tested from the fact कि भाई ये law जो है वो fundamental rights को जो है implement करने के लिए लाया गया है तो Supreme Court has stated that validity of a law can be tested from if that particular law is helpful in implementing fundamental duty is helpful in implementing fundamental duty. All right, let us move on now. Let us move on now to the next question. यहां पे हम लोग क्या देख रहे हैं फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज राइट सेकंड इज आल्सो राइट द आंसर देयर फोर इज सी आंसर देयर फोर इज सी 72 का आंसर सी है 73 लेके आते हैं ओके वेरी नाइस क्वेश्चन एंड अ वेरी इजी क्वेश्चन आल्सो एवरी इजी क्वेश्चन इज अ नाइस क्वेश्चन वाई दो मार्क्स मिलता है ठीक है उतने हम लोग आगे चले जाते हैं कॉम्पिटिशन में कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग फॉलोइंग लैंडमार्क जजमेंट ऑफ सुप्रीम कोर्ट सज्जन सिंह वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ राजस्थान वामन राव वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया एमसी मेहता वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया इंदिरा गांधी वर्सेस राजनारायण विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग जजमेंट्स आर नॉट रिलेटेड टू कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनलाइजेशन ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल प्रॉब्लम वन टू एंड फोर फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट वॉज विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू अमेंटेबिलिटी ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट ऑल राइट सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट वामन राव वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया इट इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू आर्टिकल थर्टी वन ए ठीक है सॉरी अमेंटेबिलिटी ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट सज्जन सिंह वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ राजस्थान वामन राव वर्सेस यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया आर्टिकल 31 ए नॉट रिलेटेड टू कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनलाइजेशन ऑफ एनवायरमेंटल लॉ ओके श्रेय वाजपेयी आई विल आई विल ठीक है आई विल सजेस्ट यू समथिंग एमसी मेहता वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया अफकोर्स एनवायरमेंट एमसी मेहता ये नाम जहां सुनाना समझ लेना एनवायरमेंट का केस है वाई बिकॉज एमसी मेहता इज अ बिग एनवायरमेंटलिस्ट एंड ही हैज He has gone to Supreme Court through PIL in number of environmental issues. In fact, Supreme Court, looking at his dedication towards, looking at his dedication towards environmental law in India, has also had also provided him, uh, had also gifted him, also had also gifted him fifty thousand rupees. कि भाई ठीक है आपने environment के बारे में आप बहुत concern है and because of you environmental problems in India have come into limelight. So appreciate we are we are showing our appreciation through this particular gift. All right, and then is Indira Gandhi versus Rajnarayan. It was a case on election petition because of which Indira Gandhi lost, uh, because of which Indira Gandhi lost her case in Allahabad High Court, and then you know that spiraled into a political mess. We will talk about it when you do when we study post independence history in your mains, and we are going to study mains together. One, two, and four is the right answer. One, two, and four is in C. So C is the right answer. C is the right answer. Come on, let us go to question number seventy-four. 
74 पे चलते हैं कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग अटॉर्नी जनरल ऑफ इंडिया इट इज अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोस्ट ऑब्वियसली इट इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल पोस्ट ऑफ आर्टिकल 76 आर्टिकल 76 व्हिच होल्ड्स अल्टीमेट पावर ओवर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया अल्टीमेट पावर जो है ना दिस टर्म कुड बी एंबिगुअस बट यू नो अल्टीमेट पावर इन द सेंस दैट ही इज द फर्स्ट लॉयर ही इज द फर्स्ट लॉयर ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ठीक है उस सेंस में अल्टीमेट पावर है तो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज राइट सेकंड स्टेटमेंट द टर्म ऑफ अटॉर्नी जनरल इज नॉट फिक्स्ड बाय द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन यस इट इज नॉट फिक्स दैट मींस ही होल्ड्स द ऑफिस इन द टिल द प्लेजर ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट प्रेसिडेंट ने अगर उनको बोल दिया कि रिजाइन कर दो देन द अटॉर्नी जनरल हैज टू रिजाइन 74th का आंसर देयरफॉर इज सी बोथ 1 एंड 2 मूविंग ऑन 75 क्वेश्चन नंबर 75 फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट क्या है क्वेश्चन कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग सुप्रीम कोर्ट सुप्रीम कोर्ट एट द इंसेप्शन ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन हैड स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ टेन जजेस इंक्लूडिंग चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया नो 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 इट हैड द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ सेवन जजेस ऑल राइट ओनली इंग्लिश इज अलाउड इन द प्रोसीडिंग्स ऑफ द सुप्रीम कोर्ट येस ओनली इंग्लिश इज अलाउड स्टेटमेंट टू ओनली स्टेटमेंट टू इज राइट हेंस ऑर आंसर इज बी बट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दिस फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट द रिमोबर ऑफ फैक्ट इट विल बी आस्ट इन एग्जामिनेशन इट हैज बीन वन आस्ट इन एग्जामिनेशन ठीक है ओके दीपांकर यू हैव नॉट गॉट रिप्लाई और योर मेल वी आर सॉरी फॉर दैट ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ दिस इंस्टीट्यूट आई माई सेल्फ आई माई सेल्फ यू नो आई एम एपोलॉजाइजिंग आई एम सॉरी फॉर इट वॉट यू कैन डू इज यू कैन कॉन्टेक्ट मी थ्रू द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू जी एस कोर प्रम संपूर्ण इज द नेम ऑफ द ग्रुप गेट एडेड टू इट उसके बाद जो इश्यूज रहेंगे आपके विद रिस्पेक्ट टू पढ़ाई लेट मी नो वी विल गेट इट रिजॉल्व ऑल राइट विना सिंह अच्छा सेवेंटी फोर का ना स्टेटमेंट वन आई हैव टोल्ड यू अल्टीमेट पावर इट इज एन एम्बिगुएस टर्म ठीक है एम्बिगुएस टर्म है यूपीएससी के एग्जाम में बेसिकली स्पीकिंग इस तरह का टर्म नहीं आएगा बट स्टिल इफ यू कंसिडर फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ ही बींग द फर्स्ट लॉयर ठीक है उस हिसाब से फिर वो टर्म सही बैठता है in that particular statement all right chalo let us go to question number 70 75 ho gaya hai theek hai 75 is done let us move to question number 76 76 to ho gaya hai rajwardhan sir ne kar diya hai aur mere se acha kar diya hai all right okay okay एटी एट क्वेश्चन देखते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी एट देन वी विल कम टू ट्वेंटी फोर क्वेश्चन एक बार देख लेते हैं देर इज अ डाउट ऑन ट्वेंटी फोर क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो ना एक क्वेश्चन नंबर एटी एट बहुत नीचे है ओके यर वी कम कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट रिगार्डिंग लैपसिंग ऑफ बिल इन पार्लियामेंट वेन अ बिल इज पेंडिंग इन राज्यसभा बट हैज नॉट बीन पास बाय लोकसभा the bill is not considered to be lapsed absolutely if the bill has originated in the rajya sabha and not passed by the rajya sabha and it has not gone to lok sabha and if the lok sabha dissolve it it is not considered to be lapsed theek hai aage badhte hain if there are bills that are pending against the parliamentary committees pending in hona chahiye that are pending in parliamentary committees the bill will not lapse on the dissolution of lok sabha absolutely second statement is also correct if the bill is with parliamentary committee na so it will stay alive it will not lapse when a bill is passed by both houses of the parliament but has not been returned by the president but has been returned by the president for rajya sabha to reconsider the bill is not considered to be lapsed absolutely theek hai absolutely second uh, third statement is also right our answer is therefore d 1 2 and 3 and answer is d 1 2 and 3 theek hai moving on to question 89 Consider the following statements regarding Panchayati Raj institution. Mayo Resolution of 1870 is known as Magna Carta of Local Governance in India. No, it was not Lord Mayo who brought local governance in India back to life. Ah, uh, it was. You will tell me who it was. Okay, comment section me. Bolo, ye koi tha. Okay, which Governor General brought? Me options de tau do. Lytton and Ripon. In dono me se ek hai. You tell me who it was. second statement dr ambedkar opposed the inclusion of panchayats in constitution yes he did because he felt that villages are dens of ignorance and if panchayats are included as one of the institutes of governance what will happen is 
upper caste will dominate them and lower caste will not be able to participate all right so according to him panchayats will not be panchayats will not be democratic they will not allow democracy to blossom in the villages of india yes vikram you are right but only one answer that i am disappointed vikram you are absolutely right chalo moving on now so first statement is wrong second statement is correct our answer is b our answer is b 90 dekh lete hain question number 90 Okay. Dipanshu, your answer is also right. Thank you so much for participating. I really appreciate it. Consider the following statements regarding jurisdiction of Central Bureau of Investigation, that is CBI. CBI has pan India, pan India jurisdiction under Delhi Special Police Establishment Act of 1946. Absolutely not. They go jurisdiction all over India. होने का मतलब क्या है कि it can go anywhere in India and conduct its investigation. CBI can do that, but with consent of the state. All right, or else on the orders of high court, ठीक है? Or else on the high orders or high court. तो pan India jurisdiction तो भाई नहीं है, ठीक है? Second statement, CBI can continue to investigate cases in the state that are registered prior to withdrawal of general consent. Absolutely, देखो general consent और special consent है ना? ये concept आपको देखना पड़ेगा, देख के जाना exam में पूछेंगे इस बार. It has been in news, it has been in news, तो आपको देखना पड़ेगा और देख के जाना ठीक से. अगर कोई problem है तो बात करेंगे हम लोग टेलीग्राम पे डोंट वरी अबाउट इट ठीक है लेकिन जनरल कंसेंट अगर विड्रॉ किया ना दैट डज नॉट मीन प्रायर इन्वेस्टिगेशन विल स्टॉप ऑल राइट नाउ दे आर आस्किंग अस दे आर आस्किंग अस टू आइडेंटिफाई इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट बोथ स्टेटमेंट्स आर इन ओके सेकंड स्टेटमेंट इज राइट आई एम सो सॉरी थोड़ा फ्लो में मैं इधर उधर चला गया तो सीबीआई कैन कंटिन्यू टू इन्वेस्टिगेट केसेस इन द स्टेट डेट आर रजिस्टर्ड प्रायर टू विड्रॉल ऑफ जनरल जनरल कंसेंट एब्सोल्युटली ठीक है वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द एक्सप्लेनेशन बट बोलते वक्त थोड़ा मैं फ्लो में चला गया आई एम सो सॉरी फॉर दैट सेकंड स्टेटमेंट इज राइट फर्स्ट इज इनकरेक्ट आवर आंसर देयरफॉर इज इनकरेक्ट स्टेटमेंट बोला है ना ढूंढने के लिए आवर आंसर इज ए जस्ट रिमेंबर वन थिंग गाइस सीबीआई इज नॉट अ स्टैट्यूटरी बॉडी ठीक है दिल्ली स्पेशल पावर्स एक्ट जो है दिल्ली स्पेशल पुलिस पावर्स एक्ट जो है व्हाट इट डज इज सर बट स्टेटमेंट कंप्लीट अरे स्टेटमेंट एक मिनट स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट कंप्लीट इन इट सेल्फ देन क्वेश्चन कौन सा यार कौन सा स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट कंप्लीट विक्रम आशीष कुमार प्रोसीजर एस्टेब्लिश बाय लॉ इज फ्रॉम जापानीज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ठीक है यूके आल्सो डज इट बट रिटर्न फॉर्मेट में वी हैव टेकन इट फ्रॉम समवेर ना तो इट इज जापान ठीक है इन यूके इट इज नॉट इन रिटर्न फॉर्मेट प्रोसीजर एस्टेब्लिश बाय लॉ ऑल राइट तो रिटर्न फॉर्मेट में हमने ये जापान से लिया ठीक है स्टेटमेंट इज कंप्लीट यार डोंट वरी ठीक है तो फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट जो है ना वो इनकरेक्ट है सेकंड स्टेटमेंट करेक्ट है सीबीआई के बारे में एक बात याद रखना इट इज नॉट अ स्टेट्यूटरी बॉडी है ये गलती कर दोगे नहीं तो एग्जाम में अगर क्वेश्चन आएगा तो ओके सो Our answer is A. Chalo, agla question. Next question we'll look into. Okay, ninety-one. Question number ninety-one. Sir, statement one. नहीं यार complete है. I don't think it is incomplete. ठीक है. It is governed. Yes, Bhumika. That is what I am saying. It is governed by that particular act. It is governed by Delhi Special uh, Delhi uh, Police Special Establishment Act. But it was not established under that particular law. CBI was actually established to look into corruption matters during Second World War. ऐसा लगा था कि Second World War पे ना बहुत corruption हो रहा है for the procurement of materials that is needed by government for war. इसलिए CBI बना था. But it is not established under that act. Hence, it is not a statutory body. भूमिका. ठीक है? 91 देख लेते हैं क्वेश्चन नंबर 91 कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स लॉ मेड बाय सेंटर कैन नॉट बी अबाउ द सोवरेनिटी ऑफ द स्टेट सोवरेनिटी ऑफ द स्टेट लॉ मेड बाय सेंटर देखो ये मतलब एक तरह का ना यहां पे सोवरेनिटी वर्ड इज नॉट यूज्ड इन द मैनर इन विच वी कंसीडर सोवरेनिटी इन द प्रीएम्बल 
सुवर्निटी का मतलब है लॉ मेड बाय सेंटर कैन नॉट टेक अवे द पावर्स ऑफ द स्टेट और टेक अवे द फेडरल कैरेक्टर ऑफ इंडिया ठीक है तो इन दैट वे दिस पर्टिकुलर हेंस दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट वन इज करेक्ट बोथ पॉलिटिकल एंड लीगल राइट कैन बी चैलेंज अंडर ओरिजिनल जुरिस्डिक्शन ऑफ आर्टिकल थ्री हंड्रेड एंड थर्टी वन नो इट इज ओनली द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल मैटर्स दैट कैन बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन फॉर इट इज ओनली द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल मैटर्स दैट कैन बी टेकन इन टू कंसिडरेशन फॉर ओरिजिनल जुरिस्डिक्शन ठीक है तो देर इज लिमिट फॉर वॉट कैन बी टेकन अप इन ओरिजिनल जुरिस्डिक्शन पॉलिटिकल इश्यूज तो लिए ही नहीं जा सकते वन पार्टी इज यू नो इफ इट इज इन सेंटर one party is administering center and some opposition party is administering state so there will be political issues there will be political differences between the two states also so those political differences will not be taken into consideration only constitutional issues theek hai only constitutional issues will be taken up when it comes to original jurisdiction okay so we are done with we are done with it depends upon the context of the question vikram your what you are asking your doubt is absolutely right but read it according to the context of the question theek hai agar main ye statement dekhta sovereignty of the state to main ye sochta mere dimag mein ye kabhi nahi aata dekho constitution ne sovereignty states ko diya hi nahi hai na theek hai to sovereignty lene ki kya baat hai constitution ne sovereignty diya hai in different term in different sense usne sovereignty constitution ne sovereignty diya hai in the sense that स्टेट हैव देयर ओन डोमेन ठीक है तो आई विल गो फॉर माई थिंकिंग विल गो फॉर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर टर्म इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एस्पेक्ट की भाई डोमेन की बात कर रहे हैं तो इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ अ पर्टिकुलर टर्म डिपेंड्स ऑन द कंटेक्स ऑफ द क्वेश्चन ऑल राइट नथिंग एल्स डोंट वरी डोंट वरी ठीक है एम्बिगिटी अभी लग रहा है ना उस वक्त नहीं लगेगा वी आर गोइंग थ्रू दिस डिस्कशन यू विल बी पार्ट ऑफ you know other discussions also don't worry about this you will settle down in the way in which interpretation of statements have to be done don't worry about it theek hai ashish abhi so ke uthe ho abhi bol rahe ho ripon ho gaya aadhe ghante pehle ye discussion chalo question number 92 dekhte hain thodi der aur tum logo ko mujhe jhelna hai okay question number 92 dekhna hai apne ko Which of the following? Yes, dekhwa, Vikram. Again, a good query you have asked. When you write a paper of general studies, na you have to not think about exceptions. ठीक है? You have to not think about exceptions. मैं मैं एक example देता हूँ. Let me give you an example. Suppose there is a question, there is a statement. The center can make law on the subjects in स्टेट सब्जेक्ट इन स्टेट लिस्ट ऑल राइट अगर ये स्टेटमेंट है ना तो ये स्टेटमेंट ये स्टेटमेंट बिकॉज इट इज इन जनरल स्टडीज दिस स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग लेकिन अगर स्टेटमेंट ये है कि नो सरकमस्टेंसेस सेंटर कैन मेक लॉ ऑन द सब्जेक्ट दैट आर इन स्टेट लिस्ट तो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग ठीक है फर्क देख रहे हो इन द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इट इज अ जनरल स्टेटमेंट इट इज अ जनरल स्टेटमेंट All right, and in general statement you should not think about exception. लेकिन अगर ऐसा statement दिया है ना कि भाई हो ही नहीं सकता. अगर ऐसा statement है in which you have to consider all possibilities. For example, जैसे मैंने बोला ना under no circumstances. Under no circumstances means there is no option at all. ठीक है? Then you have to think about exception. Then you have to think about exception. In normal circumstances you have to not think about exception. Again one more example I will give. what does supreme with respect to advisory jurisdiction of supreme court what do we know supreme court can say nahi we will not give you advice supreme court can say this to the president right this is a general rule but then there is an exception theek hai there is an exception there are some cases in which supreme court has to give advice so if the statement is supreme court can deny giving advice to the president of india this statement is right but then if the statement is supreme court in no circumstances can deny giving advice to uh, the president of india then this statement is wrong i hope you are getting the difference between the two exception kaha use karna hai aur kaha nahi karna hai na i hope you have understood it all right chalo 92 question dekhte hain your doubts are very good vikram 
ठीक है और क्या है ना आपके इन डाउट की वजह से दूसरे लोगों का भी प्रॉब्लम सॉल्व होता है तो आई विल अप्रिशिएट यू आस्किंग दिस डाउट क्वेश्चन 92 विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज आर द मेंबर्स ऑफ साउथ अफ्रीकन डेवलपमेंट कम्युनिटी टांजेनिया यस नाम्बीबिया यस मोरक्को नो इजिप्ट नो तो आंसर इज बी आंसर बेसिकली इज बी वन एंड टू ओनली ठीक है साउथ अफ्रीकन डेवलपमेंट कम्युनिटी has actually been in news for you know uh, quite some time and the reason for that is engagement of indian government engagement of indian government with this particular organization agar hum log sirf naam se dekhe na to even then we will come to know that one and two only can be right because morocco and egypt are not located in southern part of africa theek hai chalo aage badhte hain question number 93 हाँ आंसर की कल मिलेगा शुभम यू विल गेट आंसर की टुमारो ठीक है यू विल गेट योर आंसर की टुमारो डोंट वरी डोंट वरी एट ऑल क्वेश्चन नंबर 93 कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग इंडिया ईयू ट्रेड एंड टेक्नोलॉजी काउंसिल इंडिया इज द फर्स्ट कंट्री टू लॉन्च ट्रेड एंड टेक्नोलॉजी काउंसिल विद यू नो इट इज द फर्स्ट कंट्री इज एक्चुअली यूएसए इंडिया इज नॉट द फर्स्ट कंट्री फर्स्ट कंट्रीज यूएसए इंडिया सेकंड कंट्री चलो अगला देखते हैं अगला स्टेटमेंट देखते हैं इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू फोकस इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू फोकस ऑन एरियाज लाइक आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस फाइव जी एंड क्रॉस बॉर्डर डेटा शेयरिंग एब्सोल्युटली दिस पर्टिकुलर फील्ड्स आर टेकन इन द काउंसिल बिकॉज दे हैव ग्रेट रोल टू प्ले इन जियो पॉलिटिक्स इन द कमिंग टाइम्स ऑल हाँ बिल्कुल विक्रम मैंने वही बोला ना लॉजिकली भी हो जाता है एलिमिनेशन से हो जाता तो आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस 5G एंड क्रॉस बॉर्डर डेटा शेयरिंग आर कंसीडर्ड टू बी इंपॉर्टेंट आल्सो फ्रॉम द पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू ऑफ जियो स्ट्रेटेजी ठीक है दैट इज व्हाई दे आर इंक्लूडेड इनफैक्ट दे आर स्पेसिफिकली इंक्लूडेड इन द एग्रीमेंट स्टेटिंग की भाई ये जियो पॉलिटिक्स से जियो पॉलिटिक्स में हेल्प करेगा अंडर दिस इनिशियटिव हाई लेवल ईयू इंडिया डिजिटल Investment forum has been set up to carry out free trade agreement. Free trade agreement has been set up, but not under this particular ये ठीक है not under this particular arrangement. So what we see is in question number ninety three, uh, only statement two is right. So our answer is B. Answer is B. All right. Moving on now. With reference to currency monitoring list, consider the following statements. The U.S. De Department of Treasury receive, uh, releases an annual report to track global economic development and foreign exchange rates. This statement is incorrect. Okay. Uh, the reason for that is, this report annually bahar nahi aata. This report jo hai, it comes out in every six months. So it is, so it is, you know. Uh, बाय एनुअली और सेमी एनुअली ठीक है सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट पुटिंग अ कंट्री अंडर करेंसी मॉनिटरिंग लिस्ट मीन्स दैट द कंट्री हैज टू फेस पेनल्टी एंड सेंक्शन नो 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 इट ओनली मीन्स की यूएस विल ट्रैक दैट पर्टिकुलर करेंसी एंड गिव एडवाइजरी टू इट्स इन्वेस्टर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ वॉट ही वॉट यूएस ऑब्जर्व विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू दैट पर्टिकुलर करेंसी तो सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग इंडिया हैज रिसेंटली बीन इंक्लूडेड अंडर दिस मॉनिटरिंग लिस्ट नो इंडिया हैज दो साल पहले एक्चुअली इंडिया को इस इस पर्टिकुलर लिस्ट से बाहर निकाला गया था तो इंडिया इज नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द लिस्ट राइट नाउ एंड इट हैज नॉट आल्सो बीन रिसेंटली इंक्लूडेड इन द लिस्ट सो सेकंड एंड थर्ड स्टेटमेंट देर फोर आर इन करेक्ट सेकेंड एंड थर्ड स्टेटमेंट आर इन करेक्ट एक्चुअली ऑल द स्टेटमेंट आर इन करेक्ट वन टू एंड थ्री एंड दे आर आस्किंग अच विच आर द इन करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट ना तो आंसर इज डी और आंसर इज डी ठीक है मूविंग ऑन नाउ टू क्वेश्चन नाइनटी फाइव द केरे स्ट्रेट Sometimes seen, sometimes is seen in news. Connects which of the following water bodies? All right. So question from Ukraine war. Question based on Ukraine war. The answer is A. Black Sea and the seas of and the sea of Azov. Okay, ninety six. देख लेते हैं. Consider the following statements regarding ASEAN Digital Ministers Meeting. It is an annual meeting of telecom ministers of ASEAN countries, of ASEAN countries and their dialogue partner. Absolutely correct statement. Recently, India and ASEAN digital ministers meeting 
jointly launched India ASEAN Digital Work Plan 2023 to cooperate in emerging areas in the field of information and communication technologies. Both these statements are right. In fact, you should know about this particular meeting. All right, India has gained strategic advantage by this particular agreement. So our answer, therefore, because they are asking us to consider correct statement, na? अभी तो consider the statement ही है, अभी देखेंगे correct है incorrect. हाँ, correct statement ढूंढने बोला है ना, they are asked, they have asked us to identify the correct statement और answer is C. Moving on to question number ninety seven. Ninety seven. Consider with reference to Counter-Terrorism Commi Committee, Executive Directorate of UNSC, consider the following statement. The, CE, the CTED was established by United Nations Resolution to provide Counter-Terrorism Committee. Absolutely right. ठीक है, बिल्कुल सही है ये. United Nations की Security Council ने ही ये बनाया था. For the purpose of, for the purpose of focusing on Counter-Terrorism. The CTED comprises only of permanent members. No, it comprises of both permanent and non-permanent members. So, 15 members is me hote hai. members United Nations Security Council ke, whether be permanent or non-permanent member. Our answer therefore is A. Our answer is A. Okay, moving on to the next question. That is question number 98. Question number 98 dekh lete hai. Consider the following statements regarding non-nuclear aggression agreement. This agreement was signed between India and Pakistan during the Prime Ministership of Rajiv Gandhi and Benazir Bhutto respectively. It is a nuclear weapon control treaty mediated by World Bank between India and Pakistan to control nuclear war, uh, nuclear arms. No, 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 no. Uh, World Bank has mediated Indus Water Agreement between India and Pakistan, not this treaty. Under this treaty, both the signatories are barred from carrying out a surprise attack on each other, each other's nuclear facilities. Yes, this statement is correct. Okay. Operation Brass Tracks was the major force behind this nuclear treaty. Operation Brass Track in 1986, mein when both India and Pakistan had mobilized its forces on Rajasthan border of India. Okay. So, वहाँ पे बहुत heavy मात्रा में हम लोग देख रहे थे forces were mobilized by both countries and it seemed कि war will happen. तो fearing कि if war happens there will be attack on each other's nuclear facility what happened is what what was done was Benazir Bhutto and Rajiv Gandhi signed this particular agreement. So uh, second and third statement are correct first is incorrect our answer therefore is our answer therefore is B B is our uh, sorry B is our answer. Moving on to question number ninety nine. Question number 99. With reference to one country true system approach sometimes seen in news consider the following statement. It was proposed by Deng Xiaoping with the aim to unify China and Taiwan. Uh, basically na, ye, this particular system, this particular concept was brought by Deng Xiaoping for the purpose of Macau and Hong Kong. But then it was also extended by him to Taiwan. So first statement is correct. Under this principle, both Hong Kong and Macau could continue to have its own governmental system except trade, defense and foreign relations. Second statement is not correct. Okay. Second statement is not correct. Trade relations jo hai, that were also part of one country, two system. So Hong Kong and Macau could have their own trade systems. Okay. So second statement is not correct. First is correct. Answer therefore is one. A, only one. Last, question number 100, consider the following statements regarding Henley Passport Index 2023. It ranks passports of several countries according to the number of destinations their holders can assess without prior visa. Yes, it actually shows how powerful your passport is. Ki aap kitne countries mein ja sakte ho without carrying your passport. That is what this report is. Though India's ranking has improved this year, but its access to other countries has decreased. Yes, this particular statement is correct. Okay. Ranking improved, hai, but our access to countries has decreased. This is because dusre countries ka bhi access kam hua hai, se zyada kam hua hai. Take a dusre countries ke citizens ka to go to some other country without passport, wo access bhi zyada kam hua hai se. So comparatively, we have performed better. The answer therefore is correct. Answer therefore is both one and two. Which is the most powerful passport according to this index? It is Japanese passport. Okay friends, I am done.
ठीक है आई एम डन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड द क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू पॉलिटी एंड इंटरनेशनल रिलेशन इफ देर इज एनीथिंग प्लीज लेट मी नो एज आई टोल्ड यू डू रजिस्टर फॉर those who have not do register for our second and third test it will help you immensely join our telegram channel and questions pe focus karo theek hai in the last two months solve as many you know go through as many questions as you can and for that purpose if you need a good question bank to gs core has come up with it polity ka aur dusre subjects ka bhi aa raha hai but polity ka workbook is already available it will help you immensely it contains more than 1000 questions of polity All right. Uh, I'll see you, and I hope to see you in interactions on Telegram. As I've told you, I will do everything, and my colleagues will do everything to make sure that all of you write your mains examination this year. Okay. If there is anything that you need from our side, please let me know. Please let us know. As institute, we are always with you. Okay. Thank you so much, and we'll meet soon. Bye.